And we are here with your daily new Nerino, and it's with great joy. I uh, welcome back one of the oldest friends of ours on the interwebs, Mr. Press Reset Earth, now known as Resisting the Reset. How are you, brother? Man, I'm good. I'm loving it. I'm loving life. I uh, I haven't been posting much, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely living life. I just moved up here to New Hampshire. So Good just settling you. in, you know, getting community here and, you know, focusing, focusing on yeah. God and, you know, getting everything right. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's the, yeah. that's the fundamental thing. I think that we're all trying to look for now is truth, right? Truth, uh, trust and, and spirituality in essence, that's the, the three key components, I mean, to a happy life. Right. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, they're all one of the same, actually. But yeah, that's right. And FYGP, <laughs> you're back with us too. Thank you for coming along. Thank you so much for inviting me. So glad to be on. Oh. And as you can see, I got press Saturn mirror. In the yeah, <laughs> the Saturn mirror. Oh no, <laughs> the Saturn mirror. Look out, guys. No, it has to be diamond. The Simon, the Saturn mirror oh. is is. It was like a square in a circle, and that's why everyone said it was a Saturn mirror or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, it was the, it was the cube, the cube worship. Yeah, yeah. All the, all the, uh, you know, um, occult symbolism there, right? Uh, that's what everyone would would say. Of course, they were mostly joking, but because uh, you're a shill, <laughs> you're obvious, you're obviously a shill. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that makes me a shill, right? Yeah, there was a lot of that going on back in the day. Remember why everyone was calling everyone a shill? Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. shilling, shilling for what? Like who's shilling? Like, yeah. <laughs> I think you hit your mic, dude. Your uh, your mic's yeah, gone. Muted. Yes, you're muted. Okay, I was saying that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, in current you know, in current uh, times right now, like we've watched the disintegration of trust and and. Um, the destruction of the truth uh, by weaponization of, of language, um, creating a new victim class. Um, we have a whole brand new type of victim from when we were doing this 10 years ago. Like, it's mm. pretty wild. I mean, what's your take on that, Press? Like, I mean, you know, you and I, we've, we've kept in touch over the years, but we really haven't uh, in the last, I guess, the last couple of years, we both had pretty interestingly busy lives watching things disintegrate around us. It's, like to get your take man well i mean the disintegration of truth is profound uh mm -hmm. uh i'll touch on that first like i don't think we've ever lived in a uh situation where people just can't grasp what truth is like there's so many differing opinions out there yeah. uh, it's like a it's like a split of it, because i i do think in a way it's sort of a result of the real truth, the objective truth, things that we've been talking about for a long time about certain mm -hmm. topics, you know, um, mm -hmm. it, it, you could even say like nine 11 truth or something like, like that. Right? Uh, right. That is coming, not that specifically, but things like that are coming to the forefront in so many different areas of, of society that, it, you know, the establishment didn't really know how to deal with it. So, and a lot of people didn't know how to deal with it. And so, it's kind of bifurcated uh, realities for people where mm. one group of people are watching one movie or experiencing one reality. And then you have another group of people experiencing a completely different reality. And it, it, it goes down into like every aspect of people's lives. That, that's the most profound thing about it. Like uh, obviously like during COVID um, you know, I mean, it's just, there's so many different things that you, you could bring up there where it was like, you know, are you vaccinated or unvaccinated? And, no. um, the, I, of course we can't get into it too much. I think this is on YouTube, but, um, you know, a, a lot of people were saying that, uh, you know, the unvaccinated w were getting absolutely ridiculously sick and, you know, they're all being hospitalized. Remember back in like 2021 yep, and then yep. a lot of people were saying that, uh, of course, the establishment and the media was saying that at first you uh, if you got the covid vaccine um that you wouldn't get covid that was the narrative 
and that's what they were saying. Yeah, and conveniently, everybody forgot that that was the narrative, um, yeah. and that's how they rolled it all out, and that's how they got everybody to take it. Um, I, oh, uh, so, disclaimer time! Just disclaimer yeah. time. None of, of this course. here that you're about to hear is medical advice, financial advice, or any advice at all. We're just a couple of talking heads on the internet. Do your own research. It's all out there, even though they're scrubbing the internet daily. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, whether or not it, you know it, it, it's effective and all that, just uh, we defer to the authorities, the uh, World Health Organization, on that topic. Right. So, right. Um, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, of course. Yeah. Well, well, technically, it has to be World Health Organization here at YouTube. Yeah, I guess somebody. I uh, uh, I think it was actually Stephen Crowder got a strike for quoting the CDC. At one point, oh, yeah. because it contradicted the WHO. So, you know, it's kind of like, again, like nobody can agree on anything. So um, so you live in, in that reality and it confronted people um, in every aspect of their lives with COVID. Um, and then just with everything else, the culture war and everything where I mean, yeah. you could go on forever with, with, with yeah. these different uh, bifurcating realities or people are seeing one movie and the other people are seeing another movie and even certain events or articles that really happen that are really published that are true that one group of people don't even know about and the other group of people know everything about so yeah. um so it's things like that and um it, it makes you like I, I don't know where all of this is going um i actually think it's uh, going toward a breakdown of civilization for better or for worse but uh what was the second thing you talked about the a new victim class yeah, it's a new victim class being created by changing, like, what, okay, changing the, uh, the, the the definitions of words and then changing the legislation surrounding those words. So, like, you know, now things are like hate crimes and, you know, um, new new words are being classed as offensive, yet they just make, they just invent new words for those things and then they get politically classed, right? And like I was saying, um, with, like, BLM, Antifa, it's no... It's, it's 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 no hidden uh, uh agenda there like it's very very uh, obvious what's happening like they're being controlled and turned into a new type of victim like you know well there's, there's something called magical words and these mm. are words that instantly shut down a conversation uh words like racist um right where it doesn't really matter what you're saying if somehow they can just call you a racist um, and, and then, you know, say you're a, an oppressor of the victimhood class, you know, these, of course, it, it, basically the victim classes are everybody except white men. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. White I mean, that's basically, where, yeah, right. That's basically where they're going with it. Um, so, and well, that's where they are, they are with it. It's not where they're going, but yeah, they, exactly. they've been long past that. Like that is, <laughs> yeah. So well, like, it, um, I, I remember as long ago as like seven years uh, in my travels, like seeing like city buses in like different countries, even like where like on the backs of these signs that have like these billboards that say like, you know, hate is a crime. If you experience hate, call your police, you know, like, and it's like they've already started preconditioning us to that um, victimless crime. Right. And then like, you, you let kids ruminate on that for eight years or six years or whatever. And then it, and it, it's, it's, it's total indoctrination. Absolutely. Right. But um, go on, go on, continue. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's an interesting point that it's a victimless thing because like, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, in some cases, obviously with an actual hate crime, it can be a victim crime, but like, sir, like now it's to the point where it's like, if you say uh, anything, like anything contradictory toward um, what the woke ideology is that, is well you know to them a, a crime and a, a hate crime literally and especially yeah. in in europe fybgp i know you're in serbia it's probably not as bad in eastern europe but um you know in the western part of europe uh you know it's even worse where you can uh actually get arrested for saying certain things uh that are deemed hateful in like you know countries like the uk and especially germany um i think there was a like a a woman who was arrested um at one point for, for just saying something that could be deemed as quote unquote hateful. So, you know, these are things that are uh, being used to basically oppress the, uh, the middle class in Western countries because the middle class and upper middle class or even lower middle class, right. The working class, most mm -hmm. of them are just white. Right. I mean, that's, 
So, it, it, you know, it's being used to just oppress the people. It's it, it's just a total excuse um, to uh, for the enemies to uh, oppress their enemies, right? So the whole idea is this, right? There's um, formal and informal uh, stories uh, that or narratives that are playing out. The formal narrative is we have to defeat hate. We have to defeat uh, the oppressors, the white uh, middle class or whatever it is, um, you know, because they're yeah. just so hateful or whatever it is, right? They have privilege. Um, and it's not even a, but, but the informal uh, is, is really this narrative, the truth, the truthful narrative, is, like what's actually going on is that this is just a total excuse to oppress everybody. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, um, it's like the it's just a lie, a convenient lie that the elites use to exercise power and mm -hmm. to control like the conversation and to control f speech on the Internet and speech in public. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of what's going on. Maybe is it is it like that in Serbia? Um, FYGP. Mm, fortunately, not really. Um, yeah, it's fortunately Eastern Europe. Serbia. Serbia. Yeah, Eastern Europe is for sure a bit different, and you don't have that uh, sort of uh, social justice movement as present in countries such as Serbia as in Western Europe. Fortunately, I think that's a good thing because uh, I right now study uh, my doctorate in political science in Serbia, and uh, it was a completely different uh, vibe from where I was before, because before right. I was in Austria, and uh, there you couldn't say anything against the establishment. And all you had yeah. to say is the European Union is amazing. And here in Serbia, I actually was at my class. And then we talked about the destruction of Nord Stream 2. And then I said, well, just a day after, a new pipeline was opened from Norway to Poland. And mm -hmm. uh, why, is it going to, yeah, why is it going to Poland? Uh, it's because the United States is right now shifting uh, their allies and they want to make Poland the number one ally because they think of Germany as unreliable because Germany would like to do some would like to do business with Russia. So in Serbia, I would say for sure the kind of the shutdown techniques that you see in Western Europe and in America, they're not that present and uh, you won't hear anybody calling anybody a racist over here for pretty much anything. Now, we do have some NGOs that are constantly invested in pushing through things such as the LGBT agenda. It was a big uh, sort of uh, fight against, uh, well, f f some were for and some were against a gay parade in Belgrade. So mm -hmm. that was kind of a big topic. But uh, the country is much more conservative uh, per se than like other, well, than like Western Europe, that's for sure. I, you know, to comment on that, I was going to say that, like, at at the risk of misappropriating all of Serbian culture, all all the friends that I've made in the past, like as a child up to now, I've noticed all Serbian people that I've met were always already very politically inclined. Like they were already educated. I guess probably surviving a war did that to their culture. But I mean, like, it was just interesting to note that that is where truth and trust kind of plays off of each other in, in, in that in that sense like it, it's not being divided by these like like you said these bifurcating uh principles um and like perfect example of that is here in canada like with the trucker protest like while that was happening all the state-funded media here are telling one story like i literally had to either watch the live streams on youtube which by the way a lot of good people did a lot of really good work uh like just playing this shit live all day long awesome but to get other news i literally had to go to other broadcasters and journalists from the states in europe just to find out about my own country <laughs> like it's how bizarre is that yeah it's they've got their bizarre. tentacles yeah i was gonna say they've got their tentacles everywhere uh mm -hmm. and it, it's good though that you know some of these eastern european nations because i think a lot of them experienced you know the soviet union and communism and then some of them are, are recently had some upheaval like like serbia which you know in the 90s it was it was it was you know not not so not so great there uh in terms of war and all that so 
Um, because of that, because we've had it so cushy over here in the West for so long, um, mm. you know, it, it, it's like that old meme that it's almost played out at this point where I think hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times, right? Times, yeah. I just um, heard somebody say that to me last night. Believe it or not, I literally just heard that sequence of words played to me last night. Like, that's yeah. funny in, in conversation. It's, it, it's, it's so true. Cool. And I think, I think maybe Easter parts of Eastern Europe and, and, um, and just the different parts of the world, um, are in maybe a different version, a different area of that cycle. Um, but you know, the hegemonic power on the planet is the West, uh, you know, Western Europe and the United States. It's really centered at the U S and the UK kind of. Um, right. and so, you know, that hegemonic power that has its tentacles everywhere, um, I think truly is on the verge of a collapse. Uh, and I think, I think it's because we're in that cycle. Uh, a lot of people, some people call it like the fourth turning. Uh, there was a book written on it. Uh, for, uh, what strides hands, generational theory or something like that. Yeah. Stry, and, uh, not fourth, Stry's hand. The fourth industrial revolution. This go, it goes by a few names. Actually. Well, no, yeah. that's different. The fourth, that oh. that's, that's a Klaus Schwab thing. Um, oh, no, okay. the, the, yeah, Strauss hands, I think, generational theory, where basically what I just said, that meme, mm -hmm, uh, right. where it's every 80 years or so, you know, especially Western civilization experiences a, a catastrophe or a crisis, an upheaval that sort of resets everything. Um, you know, obviously, 80 years ago, you had World War II, um, which was, you know, a big mess, obviously. And then yeah. 80 years before that, you had the Civil War. Uh, in the United States. And then um, 80 years before that, it was the Revolutionary War in the United States. So I guess it's really a U.S. centric thing, but we've had a U.S. centric, you know, globalist sort of Western empire with its tentacles everywhere for so long. So, yeah, um, I think maybe other countries are in a different version of that, uh, but it, everyone's going to feel it when uh the cookie crumbles and you know the hegemonic power collapses and i think it's already sort of starting to decline uh, yeah. i think a good example of this is you know a, a symbolic example um would be you know biden's withdrawal uh from afghanistan that total oh, huge, huge. yeah it was bad wow. how much loss of life and um like i mean present and future like with is going to become of that 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 was such a awful error in judgment and uh that's not that that's the crime against humanity in itself right there what just happened there there were so many other ways that could have been handled and uh that was probably the worst one do you just so do people around the world like see that like like what like fyg do you think like people uh, sort of look at that or when it happened they were like okay this is this is not a good sign this is like fall of rome this is not looking good <laughs> like i mean it depends on which country um i think in serbia people are certainly experiencing the upheaval and they are well aware that we are now transitioning from this unipolar world order to perhaps a multipolar one where the united states will begin to lose power and perhaps land in a deep crisis. I would say that the crisis has already begun uh, mm -hmm. since a couple of years ago, probably three or four years ago. And before that, um, the United States was in sort of stagnation when it comes to power. So I would say that in Serbia, people certainly do see that in other Western, in Western European countries, I haven't seen that that much. People uh, now are put back into sleep with all the propaganda surrounding Russia and Ukraine and China and Taiwan. So uh, it depends on really where you are on the globe. But I think yeah. you're absolutely right on your estimation that uh, the U.S. empire is coming to an end. And I think um, what the U.S. empire is tied to the most is actually the petrol dollar. And once we see that unravel, uh, we will have... Mm -hmm a huge global crisis that will uh, basically reset the entire world. And um, I think you see the beginning of that when you have Saudi Arabia talking with China about possibly selling their oil in Yen, uh, in Yuan. And um, when Russia is making all of those deals with uh, other 
uh, OPEC, con OPEC countries, uh, Russia is in OPEC plus, and I think you will have at one point an alternative currency to the dollar for oil uh, sales. And um, I think it's coming, but it's coming uh, very sort of um, step by step. So I don't mm -hmm. think the petrodollar will collapse from one day to the next, but I think it's it's on on its way to losing its right. significance. Well, it, one big indicator too is like this massive transference of wealth from 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 the U.S. coffers right over to the Ukraine, because you know the Ukraine will be in debt no matter what. So if the IMF or the Federal Reserve destroy, decide to destroy the dollar, period, that debt still remains, and that will tie into the next system that takes over. So like. It, it, it's almost like rats. Well, it's exactly like rats leaving a sinking ship. If you get what I'm saying, like that's my interpretation of it anyway. I don't know if you'd like to comment on that. No, certainly. I believe that's the case. Um, now, uh, what is going to happen with all of the Western elites? If perhaps Western countries start descending into anarchy, are they going to flee to other countries? Are they going to flee perhaps to China where all of these empty cities have been built. I mean, it's all just uh -huh. speculation, but I'm sure that uh, once uh, really the civil civilizational collapse is uh, afoot, a lot of these elites will leave to some remote places in the world where they won't uh, face the wrath of the people because, I mean, yeah. essentially what could happen. And, and and don't forget too, like other countries that were you know considered, um, I guess maybe nonpartisan. I'm not I'm not sure if that's correct or not, or if it's accurate. But like countries like Mexico, like their um, the Mexican military has now been given carte blanche to handle policing, law enforcement, and a whole bunch of other um, internal um, uh, policing. Uh, activity so like and they're amassing a large population like they have a huge number of people so like i mean i mean just keep your eyes to the south there tom <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. you know what i'm saying like who knows i'm like who knows what uh what is bubbling up in you know in the over there in, in, in that part of the world so it's 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 a it's there's a lot of things happening right now a lot of things are are changing like uh, very drastically too yeah also, i do wonder go ahead oh yeah i just wanted to add that mexico actually showed interest in joining BRICS, and so did argentina and yep i believe that's right there was another country another big country that was interested in joining BRICS. Turkey, actually, yes, it was Turkey, and possibly Iran. Now, Turkey is a member of NATO, and they had aspirations to join the European Union. So, they're they're yeah they they, they weren't members and they weren't members until their government got basically just completely wiped off the face of the planet. Oh yeah, <laughs> I that, remember that yeah, too. That. But uh, Turkey is not a yeah. member of the EU yet, and obviously for. The EU will never let in Turkey because otherwise uh, Turkey could just uh, well let most of the refugees that are sitting on the Syria-Turkey border into Europe, and they're doing it already. But if they were part of the European Union, it would just be on a much larger scale. So that is why I think well, they, uh, I, 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 they'd be stepping on their own tits there. Yes, like if, they, if yes. they did it that way, you know. So yeah. in but, terms of in terms of all of these regional powers coming together, creating a world order that is actually not based on um, on might makes right, which has been the world order that has existed so far with the unipolar uh, moments that we had ever since the 1990s. Um, I don't know what the future will bring, but uh, I, I would say that a more uh, balanced world system is certainly good for everyone. There will be less wars because no uh, power will have, no uh, country will have the power to invade others, such as the United States has done no. in the last 30 years. It's going to suck for us. It's going to suck, but at least for a <laughs> while. So like when, when, because here's yeah. the thing, right? Um, well, I don't know about Serbia, might be like fine or, or maybe not so much, but. Uh, especially like Americans and, um, you know, the UK and stuff like that, uh, Canadians, you know, when the U S is the, U the petrodollar and they're printing all this money, accruing the national debt, 
give, I mean, it's just a free for all at this point. It's almost a joke. I don't know if anybody takes it seriously anymore. I think that's part of the reason why BRICS is strengthening. I think, uh, you know, the other countries are seeing this and they're like, okay, this is bound to like just flop. I mean, $31 yeah. trillion dollars in debt. And if you look at the U.S. debt clock, you can like go to the uh, website. I think it's usdebtclock.org or something. I don't even know. If you type it in Google, you'll see how fast it's going up. It's unbelievable. So I remember I just did like a live stream about it a year ago, and it was at like twenty seven trillion or something, and now it's at thirty one. I think it is. And it's just you know, trillion is a lot of dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think so? And when they're just like uh haphazardly or haphazardly uh nonchalantly giving money to ukraine 100 billion dollars here 100 billion dollars there um and meanwhile we're gonna raise taxes on the american middle class and and we're going to hire eighty seven thousand you know irs agents um you you start to think like okay these people really don't care it really is like the Titanic is sinking, they're grabbing all the silverware and they're grabbing everything they can uh, before it sinks and just looting, lo looting the country dry. Uh, and that's exactly what's happening. That's why nobody cares when they print a hundred billion dollars and gives it to Ukraine because they know this is a sinking ship. It must be. Is yeah. it could? Yeah. Is it even possible to get out of debt that when you're thirty one trillion dollars in debt? I mean, uh, does anybody not look at that and just think this is a joke? Uh, it's it's literally like a laughing stock, you know. It's like like a clown, like a like this, like we're we're all wearing clown suits here in America. We might as well. We have a, a president who can't talk. Uh, you know, he, he <laughs> it, like he literally shakes hands with ghosts. <laughs> he sh yeah, uh, he shakes like he literally. I mean, he is random ghosts' best friend. Like the all these ghosts just love him. He's shaking their hands. And he's talking to people who aren't there. He's stumbling. He's mumbling. And so, um, you know, that in and of itself, again, these things are symbolic, but they have so much meaning, right? The fact you don't think, see, this is where like more spiritual sp perspective comes in. Like God's trying to tell us something here. When, when um, you know, this guy, when, when you have decrepit old Joe Biden, like I can, I, I could never imagine that would ever be uh, like the leader of a country um, leading the United States, it's kind of like this omen, right? It, and it really is telling us something. I, I don't care what anybody says, right? It's it's the, the, yeah. like God is telling you, like this is a sinking ship. Like just look at this guy; he is the symbol of the United States, right? And so, um, you know, that has a lot of meaning to it too. And then, yeah, with with them printing all that mo all this money, it's just it, it really is ridiculous. But the um, I think the plan. Well, I think there's just so many conflicting plans in a way uh, where they all want to roll out CBDCs, right? No matter who it is, right? If it's the Fed, uh, if it's China, if it's the, the BRICS nations, eventually that's the goal. And CBDCs, the problem is, of course, um, their central bank. Could you break that down? Yeah, yeah. Uh, CBDC, could you break that down for uh, the listeners? Andrew? Yeah, yeah. It's... <laughs> It's a central bank digital currency. So it's kind of like right. crypto, except um, it, crypto is decentralized and there isn't one centralized unit controlling the issuance and the su supply of the currency. Um, you know, with Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano, um, these cryptocurrencies uh, aren't necessarily controlled by any one person or a group of people. It's, uh, decentralized and that's all regulated by open source code that everybody can yeah. read and see and everybody's on the same page um and so so it's very transparent it's very decentralized whereas a central bank digital currency is basically a currency that is owned by a central bank which is uh controlled by the government but really it's just a group of private bankers who have hijacked the money supply of the government um, mm -hmm. and they basically have a central point where they can control the issuance and, uh, all different things, uh, relating to the currency, uh, with CBDCs, they'll even be able to, um, program the currency to do certain things or not do certain things. So one example of that would be to program 
you know, a CBDC, a U.S. Uh, central bank digital currency uh, to have an expiration date so that you're encouraged to spend it uh, before a certain point. Another uh, Fed coin. Fed coin has offered that. We were talking about that last night. In fact, yeah, go yeah. On. Which, which I, of course, you'll have the uh, the Keynesians and the sort of more government pro government people say, "Well, that will encourage people to spend and it will boost the economy. That way, they can control the economy." Haven't you heard of the free market? Like that's what controls the economy. Like you don't want these central planners controlling, uh, you know, whether or not your 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 money has an expiration date. That's ridiculous. Well, are these people gods? They know better than the, the invisible hand of the free market. Of course not. Like it's crazy, but like, so, uh, but you could, they can also program like carbon credit. So, uh, you know, in your paycheck, there's only a certain amount of your money that you can spend on, I don't know, like beef for instance, or chicken, um, or eggs, because they don't want you eating these types of things because they claim um, cows fart too much and chickens uh, produce too much shit. So they would, you know, the, the whole argument is that that will cause global warming. Uh, so, so, you know, these are the things they want to do with these CBDCs. Uh, it's, it's the most draconian thing imaginable. Uh, on top of that, they could potentially just freeze your CBDC bank account or wallet. If you're a dissident, if you uh, right. say like, you know, say something online or if you have a podcast with, uh, you know, three awesome dudes that are just like talking yeah. about this. Um, so I'd like to meet those guys. Yeah. Three awesome dudes, the three amigos. So <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like where this is going. But uh, you know, a lot of people will say that it's kind of in some ways, in some ways it is unavoid like we were heading toward a digital world like i get that but if you're yeah. gonna do it do it right like um yeah like i'm not necessarily like a luddite where where i think that you know the we should only deal with paper and physical gold and silver or something like that um right right i think there's a place for that i think it's good i think you know that needs yeah. to be maintained i don't think you should ban that because that's part of the plan you know to yeah. try to ban paper money and stuff like that which i don't it's going to take a while for them to be able to do that. But like um, the uh, if you're going to do it, do it right. So obviously with the real cryptocurrencies, uh, a lot of them do it a lot better because uh, there's no central control point where it can where, where it can be corrupted. Um, and of course, there's uh, there's theories around like Bitcoin was it put out by the CIA, et cetera. Uh, and I there's there's valid you know questions where it, where it comes up. You know, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? And this is like, big, exactly. You yeah. know, and like, I get that, but you can see it's an open source. Like you can see it all. So it's un, undoubtedly decentralized. Um, so right. um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, that's just a big question mark. We don't know. We, we may never right. know. Right. Um, it's, it's kind of like a, a fun mystery, I guess. But, um, yeah. but yeah, there's a way to do it. Uh, it, when it comes to the digital world we're entering, there's, uh, I mean, if you, man, I don't know if you want to talk about like that. If you want to segue into that, like sort of, uh, you take, you taking the brain chip about Robert J. Morris. I know you're kind of a little bit of a fan of Elon. You taking the brain chip, bro. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. Let, let's talk about that in the, in a, in a, in a, in a hot second. But um, I've been really, really gravitating towards um, ideas of intention over the last couple of years while watching things, how they've progressed. And I'm really looking now more at the intention behind certain technologies. Like you're saying, like with the Fed coin and, uh, and, and the central bank issued cryptocurrencies, um, that is going away from the decentralization that I think we require as a new culture, like a new world culture. Like we are you know, bound by our impulses, we're bound by the intentions of the things that we do. So I mean, like, if someone's going to use technology for something that's uh, bad or wicked, um, that should be sussed out, you know what I mean? If someone's doing it for good, that should be promoted and 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 subsidized, you know, by the people. So like, uh, like, either from a spiritual or financial perspective, like mm -hmm. either or both. But um, going back to the Elon thing, brain chip, um, I don't know, man. Jack me in. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Like, I don't hate the idea because I look at the intention that he is purporting. He could be totally 
he could be totally just pulling the wool over our eyes. But until I see proof of that, I'm going to hold back on that theory. Right. But um, like when I look at his reasoning, like his logic is to stay in front of the AI, because if we're being reactive towards it, then it's already too late. So he's, you know, from what I gather, he's just trying to stay in front of the problem rather than react to it and then clean up a mess later. So um, I'm all for seeing how it progresses for sure. Like, absolutely. Um, he's got to play with the big boys. He didn't have this, you know, um, like truth sphere kind of upbringing that we did. So he's not going to be attacking things from the same angles. He's probably making just as many discoveries as we did over the last decade after the Twitter files and everything. Like mm. he's probably more scared now than he ever has been. If you know, if I'm being honest, but look, I, I'm only making a, I have so much to say about this, I dude. Uh, like I, I, yeah, I go I, for I, it. Go for <laughs> it. Take I mean, the floor. I, all right. Go so, for it. Um, man. Okay. So, yeah, when it comes to uh, the brain chip, uh, which, which is definitely coming, right? There is no doubt about that. It's definitely coming. Uh, yeah. First of all, there's there's multiple ways to look at this. Firstly, um, technology, like you said, like, yes, most technology is absolutely neutral. and can be used for either good or evil. I totally agree with that. Right. But there are right. some technologies that, that, we, that, that we should not – come up with so in other words uh human cloning right is a good example where since the 90s and, and they're probably doing it in the background like how, i mean I, I mean i don't know maybe maybe not right maybe there's secret programs every, every time i see my when i see a yeah. doppelganger of somebody else that yeah. i've met i always think about how 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 shallow is the gene pool like right. i start i start thinking about things like that right. so anyway, like human, <laughs> human cloning and genetic engineering they they pass certain laws and they, they we sort of agreed as a society for the most part um and i know maybe china differed on this a little bit i'm not really sure but for the most part we agreed as a society like just as a species like we're not going to mess with that um you know I guess you could maybe if you were like a dying species and like some sort of catastrophic yeah. thing happened, uh, like maybe, but, um, yeah, no, that, that sort of goes against the, the natural order of things. So we decided not to do it. I think the brain chip is a similar thing where there should be literally like a ban globally, I think. And like, I am like sort of a libertarian, like, don't get me wrong, but I'm not an absolute, like, an I used to be like an anarcho capitalist and I'm not anymore. I just, I'm just not. Um, so, um, the, uh, I do think that maybe it can be used in certain cases for, um, uh, you know, quadriplegics and things like that. I, I do think that's that's appropriate, uh, perhaps, um, you know, in a severe, severe situation, like with certain instances where people are paralyzed from the neck or waist down, but um, yeah. or, or what, whatever, you know, there's certain diseases and stuff maybe it can cure or help with. I get it. Um, but mm -hmm. in terms of absolutely changing what a human is, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it should be introduced. I don't think we want to go down that road. I think there's right. several reasons. I mean, I could go into like some of the possibilities. Just think about already with the algorithm on social media, it's feeding you certain right. things based on what advertisers basically pay. Um, so it's like this system based on not only the dopamine uh, and j we're already basically cyborgs. We might as well have a chip in our brain, brain in some yeah. ways. At least we can detach from it. And like if we have discipline, which I mean – I'm pretty, I'm, pr I'm pretty guilty of not having the best discipline sometimes scrolling through Twitter and Instagram, whatever, but you know, I could always right. make the decision and like hunker down, but if I have a chip in my brain, no, but on top of that, it, it you know, um, advertisers could potentially pay, you know, the, the chip manufacturer or whoever, like the social media app in your chip or whatever to release dopamine. When you see certain things out in public, then all of a sudden you're totally mind controlled. Right. So like, let's say uh McDonald's right. pay, pays the Mr. Elon Musk, of course, it probably wouldn't be Elon. It'd be like some app provider in the chip. If you're just talking about the software, right. Um, th that, you know, every time you look at, uh, you know, five guys, uh, the restaurant, or um or McDonald's or something that uh, all of a sudden you get hungry it triggers the thing and, and then you just have a bunch of fat you know uh McDonald's laden idiots running around mind controlled right so like these these are the types of possibilities you got to think about 
on top of that, like, oh, like, you know, theoretically, it could evolve into a situation where you have like an, uh, an elite class or the, the only ones that can afford it or have access to it. Um, and then all of a sudden you have these uh, sort of people who have instant access to all the information in the world without even having to look mm -hmm. or type it into their smartphone. Um, and they're they're like superhumans or, you know, they can augment uh, or, or like read people's thoughts or weird stuff like that. Um, so like, right. Um, you know, that I just don't think we should go down that road. And then on top of that, um, what was the second point I had? Uh, Elon Musk. Oh yeah. Elon Musk, good or bad. I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, so it's one of those things where, um, well, second, okay. Elon Musk, right. His whole justification yeah. for this is, yeah, uh, we need to get ahead of the AI, right? He's so afraid of AI. Uh, that it's going to take over and just control everything. So we need to jack into it, right? So that makes sense. Okay. Uh, that on its face really, really doesn't make sense. You're basically giving the AI a backdoor into the most inner, deepest parts of your 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 your, your psyche, your brain, and, and and just letting it run carte blanche on you. So that's not good. But secondly, I'm not even convinced AI is a threat. I actually think like AI is going to get better and better. Like I get that, but um the the rate at which it's going first of all ai is programmed by a, a bunch of uh silicon valley dudes who um first of all it's if you look at the ai right now the algorithms it's it in uh, how do i say this it um it's based on what gives you the best dopamine hit that's that's it so if you look at the algorithms it's based on human interaction dopamine and a lot of that for the majority of people uh, and sometimes I'm one of them is just funny cat videos and, and mm. stupid stuff that is meaningless. And uh, let me tell you, so AI is going to reflect the programmers and the majority of the population. And I think where, where those people are heading like, like this, this negative feedback loop where the AI and the, the, the idiots who are just um, clicking on whatever gives them the next dopamine hit. Well, well, uh, cycle itself into oblivion and it will become irrelevant. So, so that's kind of like where right. uh, I think where AI um, might be going. And then meanwhile, the people who kind of see the whole thing for what it is, people like us, for instance, uh, will rise above that. And, and so I, I do think that you're just going to have like this, um, like the AI, it, it will deem itself irrelevant because most people are dumb and it will placate to most people's dumb, uh, just mindless, playful, you know, um, uh, dopamine. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But, mucking uh, around and, uh, just, yeah. 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 It's, it, it's the same kind of thing with, um, it's the same kind of thing with like, uh, not doing your job because you're too busy watching YouTube videos. Right. You're just looking for that next dopamine hit and, you know, in lieu of what you're supposed to do. Well, it's, um, well, and plus, Elon Musk is the Antichrist. That too. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I love your uh, Facebook, uh, your Facebook post. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I sometimes I, I go hard, man, and and like I do that. I do that on Twitter too. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm I'm to blame for that too a lot. I kind of kind of like poke the bear a bit here and there. Yeah, yeah. I got put in the Twitter jail for making a comment to Pink. <laughs> oh really pink the artist yeah wow yeah 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 well i didn't even know i she won't say what i said I'll, I'll i'll get uh i'll get de-streamed if i say it out loud <laughs> poor pink <laughs> what about you F well, she, I, what do you think uh, regarding the, the brain chips well <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna take it you taking sure. it bro you taking the no, elon no. chip no no way i'm taking Neuralink. no no way <laughs> i mean I don't want uh, anybody looking into my thoughts and then arresting me for thought crimes after that. Right. Or I don't want any AI sending me advertisements for, uh, I don't know, Jordan shoes I want to buy and then going broke yep. because the dopamine <laughs> forces me to buy all of the Jordans that are out there. No, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but uh, if if it means I would have to hide in the woods, uh, if the chip becomes mandatory one day, I will probably hide in the woods. So you I'm can't hide in the woods. The, those drones will see you from thirty thousand feet. <laughs> yeah, the Amazon drones and they will deliver the Jordans. Yeah, the Amazon <laughs> drones. We have a delivery. So, Jeez, Louise. Um, yeah, it just seems like a 
dystopian uh, sort of novel, this brain chip. And as you said, with the dopamine hits, I mean, you already see it today. You have uh, one part, you have a lot, a lot of with one part of the whole, whole population that is totally addicted to social media and just is scrolling yeah. through their phones every single day, just wanting to get the next dopamine hits by watching the next posts or funny videos. And, and I guarantee really... you, all three of us are guilty of it too. That's, that, that's Some, a sad oh, part. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, guys, I'll, I'll take one for the team. If I lose my arms and legs, I'm getting the chip. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't even think I get right. it then, dude. I, I'm just too skeptical. Although I, I can't put my say head in the jar like Barth, uh, Futurama. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I would possibly. I don't know if it would help, uh, perhaps with cognitive ability in your later years. Perhaps if uh, I ever get dementia or anything, then maybe because I mean, it's see, I'm a fan of that. I yeah, I, I'm a fan of that. Like, I'm a fan of the idea of reconnecting somebody's spine. Like, I like the idea of like you know getting motor control over a prosthetic arm. Like, I, I like those ideas. Those things sound reasonable to me. They they sound like they're they're functional, they're they're productive, and they sound like they're helpful. You know what I mean? And like 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 uh, Press was saying, it's a slippery slope. I mean. Like, how far is too far? Like, you know, again, it's like, how far do we take that technology um, when we do it? Like you were saying about it having access to your deepest areas of the brain, but it's also asynchronous. It works in the opposite direction, too, that you could also levy the power of of supercomputing to achieve answers to things that you normally wouldn't be able to process. So, I mean, like there's, there's these other aspects of it that I think are, are really good thought experiments, like just to kind of kind of go down the rabbit hole for each thing right but i mean i do i do agree with most of what you're saying there um like i mean in terms of where it could go wrong <laughs> like it's you yeah. can't put you can't put the toothpaste back in the bottle you know like it's or in the tube rather but hey i mean technically yeah, maybe you definitely... could, but it'd be really hard like like think about like toothpaste putting it back into a bottle i'd have to like get another bottle and like try to <laughs> you know but no, I, I get what Maybe. you're saying. Um, yeah. So for me, there's a rational perspective of why I've no, never take it. There's also a spiritual perspective, right? Where, you know, I'm Absolutely. just, it, right, it right. just reminds me too much of the mark of the beast, right? From the Bible and revelations. And, and, and it, it would fit in many ways uh, with that. Right. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, th there was some speculation that the, you know, what was, um, mm -hmm. and I, I was, I kind of thought maybe it would be, but then when it failed with the, with the passport system, uh, it was pretty obvious that that's not the case, but there are people still saying that, which is kind of like, no, but, um, yeah, when, when you're changing, uh, like just what it, it like your humanity to the point where you, you, you go down that road, there's just no, no turning back. Right. Um, you, you yeah, know, you've yeah. sold, you've literally in, in many ways, I mean, maybe not literally literally but but pretty darn close to literally sold your soul if you got a chip in your brain that all the corporations of the world have access to i don't care if you're a paraplegic yeah. quadriplegic you know the beast system is in mm. your brain like that is like i mean the we call it the beast system some people call it that and the mark of the beast will connect. I mean, that is the beast system. Like, just think about it. Like, that's why they call it yeah. the mark of the beast. So, like, um, yeah. And I mean, if it's 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 like a synthesis of spirituality, and like we've always talked about this, how the um, like the 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 less than spiritual um, side of our culture is always trying to synthesize the things that 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 people usually get from being a spiritual person. Um, it's uh again like it, it, it's the synth it's a synthesis that we're trying to avoid like if there's a way that we can organically create it in the decentralized fashion and and leverage uh the technology in a way that helps us i mean i don't think and, and open source the hell out of it like you know the same way how we were talking about cryptocurrency if these technologies can be uh levied in such a way that is decentralized and there's no central control and it's open i mean 
that I think that's the only way to approach it. And er like everything else, like we don't have a free market, the free market, like if there was a free market, this would be way more accessible um, in all ways. Um, and yeah, like, you know, like capitalism and government should never be mixed together. Like we, we all know this. And that's what we have. That's the world we're living in right now. So while governments are still making money off of corporate, uh, you know, um, lobbies and what have you, there's there's a lot of reparations that have to be made before we could e even really consider how to proceed with this technology. So like that's kind of adding to your point there, Tom. But yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, like, again, I don't think, uh, like, for me, it's it's never going to happen. Like, they could put a gun to my head. I, I could be quadra, parapoli. I don't care. Like, it's just, for because for me, it's like a spiritual thing. And I truly, be, like, I truly yeah. believe, like, if that comes along, um, I don't care if it's decentralized. I don't care if it's this, that, or the other. I'm not changing, you know, what I am, yeah. you know, what God made me to be, to, to, to right. try to become a god of some sort. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's just reeks of Luciferianism. Yeah. It reeks of uh, an antichrist type of mindset and timeline, you know, and, and right. like, if you know anything about, you know, the Bible or, or anything about what's going on and just mm -hmm. in the world, they're just analyzing that and how, you know, right. I mean, we can get into, which I've made like t countless videos on a long time ago that i haven't really talked about much you know um mm -hmm. the this the symbolism and stuff and in, in, in you know much of our culture throughout the years which it's kind of it kind of died down a bit because people started noticing it too much um right. but yeah a lot of it is is you know this is a spiritual war and you don't even necessarily have to be a christian to believe that um you know but mm -hmm. it, you know because there's plenty of there's plenty of pagans or new agers that believe that too but um, mm -hmm. that is an element of, of what's going on, I think. So that's why for me, yeah. it's just like, nah, you know, pe people can have fun with their, you know, uh, their instant uh, gratification. You know, in fact, soon th there'll be AI that just plugs right into your brain that there'll be no such thing as a human being creating a beautiful movie or a work of art or or um or music because the ai will figure out each individual person and what the perfect song for them is you know and you know the perfect notes right. to hit for their brain and then they'll just play that song over and over again in a pod while being you know um injected with soy and you know um whatever else <laughs> the crickets you can have your crickets you can have your, your pod have your living. crickets and eat them too. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'll just be out in the woods praising yeah. Jesus and uh, you know shooting my AR-15. And then if the drones come, the drones come. I go out with a, with a blast. It'll be fun, you know. Um, so yeah. that's just the way I like done, like done. I don't, I, you know, like there's no more questions about it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 aside, aside. For I was just going to say, sorry, aside from morbid curiosity, like I, I have no interest in it just for the record. I don't have no, I see the, the I, I see the curiosity standpoint, but you know what they say about curiosity, yeah. don't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, there's, there's an old saying uh, in construction. Don't put your fingers anywhere. You wouldn't put your dick. And it's a very, very <laughs> true <laughs> statement. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That, that reminds me, like, my, my hands all messed up because I went snowboarding for the first time. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, uh, yesterday. And uh, I, I did one of the um, Black Diamond slopes. Um, oh, I did one of those back in the day. Yeah. In like, that was awesome. Like me, just an idiot, like, ended up working my way up to one of the Black Diamonds. And, I mean, I actually, like, I, I did it. I fell like a few times on the way down though and like kind of messed up my hand, but it's not that bad, but yeah. Right on. Got stuck yeah, in the, well, the snow. Well, yeah, I, I did that. Oh, I okay. almost went down a black diamond course on like my first day and it was like, oh wow. I looked straight down this hill. I'm just like, oh no, no effing way. There's yeah. No way. I mean, 10 days later though, I did it. Hey, you ever I go snowboarding? Uh, FYP? I, I go skiing basically. I like to ski. I didn't have any accidents with uh, any skiing, but I once had a girlfriend that just for some reason she didn't break at all and just straight went down the slope and actually 
uh, it was a funny scene. I, I was driving slower than her, and then I see some guy shouting at her, and her skis up on the tree. And uh, then I, the dude was talking Russian, and I was like, what, what's going on here? Because she also spoke uh, Russian. She was half Russian, half uh, Montenegrin. And uh, then they were, like, fighting, and the guy explained that uh, she actually hit her kid. And oh. I'm like, I was like, yeah, I'm with this dude because I mean, you hit a kid. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. That's what happened. And yeah. uh, thankfully, the kid, the kid was unharmed. She was unharmed as well. But uh, I never, I, I'm really careful when I ski. I don't really uh, go too fast. I don't, uh, I don't hit people. I don't hit trees. Thank God. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that is that the trick? Uh, just don't hit people with trees. I didn't see. Yeah, I wish yeah, somebody yeah, would have told me that. I was aiming straight for the pretty tree. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and using people to slow you down. <laughs> Anyways, just to sort of add on with um, where we talked about uh, the algorithmic man, as you all Nova Noah Harari uh, calls it. Yeah, be aware of him. Oh yeah, he's like the guy who can hack the human race, but he can't hack himself a good hairdo. I know the guy. Exactly, you know. exactly. The <laughs> dude to Klaus Schwab, sort of this uh, chief uh, social scientist of the World Economic Forum. Basically, what he said it's all about it's the human quest for achieving immortality, the quest to re-engineer human beings to be happy all the time. And the quest for godlike powers. So <laughs> that is what essentially I think this is all about. And I don't want none of it because I mean, well, see, yeah, like <laughs> like they were saying, uh, Herrera. There, he does. Mm -hmm. He has a quote similar to saying something like, "Not not a man up in the clouds, but in the cloud." <laughs> yes, like the Google yeah, cloud, I think that's like what you know, in, in his something book. along those lines. And that's, again, that's going back to what I was saying about, like, this um, race to synthesize spirituality in such a fashion that it uh, benefits the technology rather than the technology benefiting spirituality. So it's a, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, dichotomy between those two things, if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, um, what was I going to say about uh, Klaus Schwab? Um God, he's he's looking more and more like a Bond villain, like every day. I think he's like uh, he's kind of like Doctor Evil, uh, mm -hmm. kind of the one that he reminds me of. Now you've got other guys like uh, that are remind me as well of Bond villains, but I can't think of any right now. But uh, there's plenty of them that look like Bond villains, uh, right? and oh shout out shout out to fellow man long time no see bud oh yeah what's up fellow man i mean you remember that you used to comment a lot on my old videos and thanks for tuning in again really nice yeah to man see thank you, you. <laughs> uh by the yeah, way hello Press, fellow you... man <laughs> Press, are yeah you man so like the whole old the old crew is all kind of just kind of recapitulating <laughs> yeah what were you saying? So now? what have you been doing? Oh, well, I was saying, are you wearing your Zelensky t-shirt? Because it's green. Oh, yeah. He's always <laughs> wearing the same shirt, right? <laughs> That's funny. Exactly, yeah. No, I can't think. When I ever see, I see a green t-shirt, I think of that for some reason. And, 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 and the same high heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's his color. Actually, it's to, his color. I need to show right. you guys something, a t-shirt I designed. Oh, okay. Oh, sweet. Saturn oh, mirror. Here it is. Shame, shame, shameless plug time. I'm going to plug the yeah. t-shirts green. I'm going to plug them. So basically what you have right here is the original Zelensky green t-shirt. And as you can see, there is the commander in chief. Uh, and it says really Slava see. Kokaini. I don't know if you can see that. We got it in green. We got it in white. Oh, nice. It's, it's a Slava Kokaini. <laughs> What's that mean? What, what uh, does it mean? Uh, yeah. It's just a play on words with Slava Ukraini, you know, the slogan that everybody uses that actually comes from World War II Nazi collaborators. So I made it, uh, instead of Slava Ukraini, I made it Slava Kokaini, and I made it in three different colors. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there it is. Nice. 
There you go. You, that's a dope. That, that's a pretty dope shirt. Are yeah, you I selling? Oh, that, yeah. I can see him there. Are you selling those? Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. But I should really sell them. <laughs> I should, because they would they would probably sell really well in Serbia. I'm sure about that. Mm -hmm. Not that, that I'm endorsing sure. cocaine or anything. I actually never did it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I mean, T-shirts are amazing, and uh, since Zelensky is probably on cocaine, I mean that's why I made those T-shirts. Oh no doubt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no doubt he's on he, cocaine. He, he's co he does he does all the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, he'll probably. Isn't overdose, it weird? So. Isn't it weird knowing that we're like literally like run by a bunch of like cokehead pedophiles? It is, but. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that more people aren't aware of that because if you look at yeah. like Joe Biden sniffing kids, I mean, you know, well, they banned that. that. They like, they didn't I like thought. actually, I don't know if they actually like banned, banned it, but they make it impossible to find on Google and YouTube. Um, because there's obviously, they might've even banned it. Um, there's obviously countless videos of that, but that you it's it's hard to find unless you go on like BitChute or something like that. Um, you or know, Rumble that's how they even. Rumble's pretty good. Rumble, yeah. yeah. You know, I've been Rumble. thinking about if I do start doing live streams again, um, that you know, mainly it's going to be on on Rumble because, um, you know, it's almost point it's pointless in my opinion in many ways to to even do these on YouTube anymore because the thing is they they actively just throttle things so badly oh yeah like if you if you have a bad channel or a, i mean a big channel you can see like what they do to videos where you bring up topics they don't want you talking about and in comparison to videos that you know are okay or just benign right so yeah. it's it's just so obvious it, and you know for for a while i, I remember back in like 2014 2015 I, I was a little skeptical of that. I was like, okay, like, like I know some people would say stuff like that, and I know they banned stuff, but there was always like these um, workaround justifications as to why, like, oh, a copyright strike or something. Um, and it was, it was, it was pretty much a, a free for all for the most part. I mean, we could talk about anything. I remember almost anything. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. and you could get traction talking about things that were controversial, but. What happened, presumably, was now I'm not a fan of Trump. Trust me, but uh, you, you know when he was elected, I think there was a certain section of the media and big tech that just went ham and went crazy on censoring people because they were like, okay, now these um, uh, opinions that are different have real world consequences, so we have to do what we can to crack down. And so after, and I notice it just so happens that right around that time, 2017, right after Trump was inaugurated um, yep. it, at the end of 2017, I, that's when I started noticing it the most. And then 2018 till now it's been like a dead zone. It, it's like impossible to get any traction. Like it was you, like you used to get. And everybody says this mm -hmm. who are in dissident spheres, this is, uh, there are rare exceptions. If you do exceptional, exceptional work, you can still kind of get a following. Um, yeah. But even then, it, it's it's hard for people. Um, so you know that that's that's how that's how it is now. And so it's all yeah. algorithmically throttled, and it just has gotten worse. Like I remember, it, yeah. it, it was bad, but it just keeps getting worse because this information still is finding a way to spread through mo mainly wor yeah. word of mouth. Um, and so, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I think I, the only solution is to I, go to other platforms. Really? I mean, yeah. And I, I'd like to send a shout out to some, some pe people, like some like big, big uh, channels out there, like Russell brand, for instance, like he's come a long way. Like he used to be so fanatically, just kind of bleeding heart lefty like at one point and then like watching him navigate through this and like trying to do a decent journalistic job i have to give him credit where credit's due like um you know he's been on a bit of a journey he doesn't know all the ins and outs he's not perfect but at least he admits that you know what i mean and that's the, like i mean that's 
to have people like that in our camp is probably better than not. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. I don't know. What's your, what your take on that? No, I agree with you. Absolutely. And uh, un unfortunately, you know, that you had to sort of have a, a following to even survive the censorship. And for the people who mm. didn't have that, unfortunately, they're stuck with third views. Right. But people such as Russell Brand or Jimmy Dore, or uh, uh, Glenn, Greenwald, Glenn Greenwald or Matt Taibbi and, and other journalists, they do exceptional work in, in many cases. And uh, I support them, mm -hmm. sure. I mean, just talking about yeah. Jimmy Dore, I don't know if you know him, but uh, he used to work for TYT, actually. And back then... Oh, I, no way. <laughs> I back then, oh, yeah, he left. He left them, he didn't left he? Them, he, yeah. he left them, didn't he? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Back then, actually, I sent him a Twitter DM, like, basically saying, you're full of shit and this and that. <laughs> and he actually responded and uh, blocked me. So <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I... That's, if, that's where that If you could from. unblock me, I would definitely send him a, a couple of messages how he has come a long way and that he has woken up to uh, many things that were going on. His uh, coverage of vaccines and COVID was exceptional. I don't think any means like bigger YouTube channel had that sort of coverage and um, more power to him and people like him yeah. because they're also fighting and the system. A lot of good comedians out there too. Like uh, I've been I, late recently in the last couple of years, I started watching JP Sears a lot more and oh, he's yeah. just a really good parody artist. Like he's, he's brilliant. Somehow he's, he's kept in front of the algorithm yes. <laughs> by just like doing like, like we, we lie to you news and all this and that like, yeah, great stuff. Like, you know, and, that's that's the kind of creativity that that we need to start i think um looking at doing in order to get the word out i mean like we have to change gears a bit and like you know what we're doing now is great but um we have to kind of up the ante a bit you know um i agree you know <laughs> i agree and i think comedy is one of the best ways to reach people now i see like mm -hmm. uh, mostly none of my videos get views they get like 30 50 views but uh, I uploaded actually a, a parody song uh, surrounding Ukraine where I just took an Albanian song from like the 90s. And the song is like, thank you, USA. You are my best friend. You are the peacekeeper. You are the legend. And that's basically the <laughs> chorus of the entire song. And I just put uh, Ukraine images uh, over it. And it got, a, got like 2,000 views. So... If right, you do great right. comedy, then you will you can break the <laughs> algorithm. I think that's that's where, where I think we love you, Zelensky. You know, yeah. uh, just just make um every now and then just make <laughs> a, like a uh, <laughs> pro like system like chant or something. Yeah, that'd be do cool. like a do like a Mar Marilyn Monroe like a happy birthday to you thing like <laughs> <laughs> hack the algorithm. Yeah, throw out like a uh, yeah. like a pro Biden song or something like that every now and then, or mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, make sure you put your children on puberty blockers if they identify as the opposite sex. You know, yeah. Um, I don't know if you know Alex Stein. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you have seen his videos. I mean, they're just hilarious uh, when he goes up to city council meetings and uh, just uh, acts like, <laughs> for example, once he was a recruiter for the Ukrainian army. And then he just walked up oh, yeah. and said, said to everyone, that. is anybody willing to sign up for this, uh, for World War III? Because he, we need every single one of you on the front lines. And he handed out a paper to everyone on the city council. And nobody would sign it. So that kind of stuff I really like. And uh, he, he really is also, uh, very good at what he does. Um, he's he's just the court jester, that guy. I, I, I do like his content. I saw him... Um, going around to uh like people holding pro ukraine signs or uh, protesting for ukraine or, or, or something like that or, or supporting the war basically and he was going up to them with his his colleague this guy this like black guy with like no shirt like scraggedy um and he's like this is tyrell my mom my uh my my wife's boyfriend yeah, yeah, whatever his name is. And he's like, will you uh, please um, give him money? He's homeless. Like, will you donate money to him instead of Ukraine? Uh, and they're all like, uh, no. <laughs> so it shows the hypocrisy. 
But I no, mean, like, the, um, yeah. yeah, he didn't he crazy glue himself to a pole too. I don't know. Mm. He's done. A, he's done. No, that's so another long. comedian. But regarding that yeah. video, the funniest part was when the Ukraine, like, uh, when he said, like, the homelessness problem is much worse in the U.S. than it is in Ukraine. And pro-Ukraine guy was like, no, because Putin has been bombing uh, people's houses. And uh, then he responded with, like, but Don Terry has never had a house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he crushed it. He crushed it. Like... Yeah. Uh, He's just he's just very in the moment. Or or how about the um the one with AOC with the super popular one, the big booty Latina, and yes. and then there's a video of her like like complaining about it uh, as she like goes up the steps and saying like this guy just uh basically harassed me or something like that, and you Absolutely could see him right. in the background waving like this. <laughs> <laughs> You can see him like at the bottom. <laughs> He's like, hi. And she, like in her video that she posted. And, and it's just like an iconic image of this guy in the background. I, I mean, just he, photo bombs it, right? Yeah. And it's just, yeah, he, he, he does some really good work like that. Yeah. There's a lot of people doing good work. And so, like, a lot of them, um, are, are able either they already had a following or they, they do exceptional work. Like somebody like Alex Stein 99 where, you know, uh, he, he wasn't known before like 2020. I think he came out in like 2020, late 2020, something like that. Um, and yeah, he actually was, he, I think he was in a couple of reality shows. Actually, if you listen to some of the interviews that he's done, um, that he has like a career of, uh, being a comedian and stuff like that. Um, and he's very open about it. And so, but he, he, he wasn't very well known though, but he, you know, nobody else was doing the things he was doing to the degree he was doing it. So the, he, you can still get attraction if, if you get traction on social media doing uh, dissident work, if, if you do exceptional work uh, or work that nobody else is doing. But if, if you're just, if you're just providing good, you know, good content and dissecting things in an accurate way, it's going to be really tough for you if you're a dissident to really get any traction. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way it is right now. So I think people are probably better off. Maybe Twitter will link some sort of video platform. Well, it might be a little easier to do it on Twitter. Um, I don't know. Like there's been talk. I don't know if it's rumors of them doing a partnership with rumble. It's probably rumors, you know, but, um, you know, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but now they have Twitter spaces, which is kind of cool. But, um, yeah. you know, Twitter, Twitter is kind of a, 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 a funky, um, uh, sort of game because it's just so much different than making like video content. Um, and there's like kind of an mm. art to it. Uh, and I was never really that great at Twitter It's more, it's just kind of shit posting. That's what I kind of do. Um, and, uh, sharing in interesting info, but you know, in in terms of like constructing really good tweets that provide value, I'm not that good at that, to be honest. <laughs> like, like I'm I'm good at shit posting and sharing info and just you know screwing around. And you can still get a little bit of a following even doing that. But um, there's definitely an art to Twitter. I, I, there's certain people on Twitter that have blocked me, which is too bad because I'm not like like Cernovich blocked me on Twitter. Uh, you know, anomaly. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah he blocked me on Twitter and like for minor criticism. So that's, that's the crazy part. But like, yeah, that's the thing about Twitter too. It's kind of like, you know, if you get blocked or if you block somebody, they're just gone, you know, they're just gone out of like existence for that person. It's kind of funny. Um, hmm. Cerebral prices is in the chat. What up, dude? Yeah, man. I'm going to, I'm going to invite him onto uh, the show actually. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've been following each other on Twitter and stuff for a while. All right, I don't even know how long. We sent you a link on your discord there. If you want to come on in, be our, be our guest. Yeah. This kind of resembles what we had on Google Hangouts back in the day, sort of. <laughs> oh, it'll never yeah. be like that, dude. Never, that, never those again. Days, those days are long gone, but uh, we, we long had, gone. we had some good, good times, man. <laughs> like, some of those conversations are probably just so 
long like i remember we like, there were some shows we would just go for like i remember you, i think you specifically had a show for that would go yeah. on like forever right yeah. like basically like just continuous eight boring. hours eight hours <laughs> eight hours like <laughs> we well, we did the uh, we did like who would sniff operation? through all that? Like, like I'm just thinking yeah. like operation who? operation Scroogel. Remember, we kept it. Yeah. We just kept yes. a new person would just start a new podcast every eight hours, and we just kept it going for what a week straight. That was pretty wild between all of us. Yeah, lots of I good people that. there. Smoking Truth, uh, I miss him. I don't know where he is at, but yeah, I miss him. Is that Drew? Yeah, you talking yeah, about yeah. Drew? Yeah. 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 That Drew. I think that was Drew. Yeah. And remember, uh, w- yeah. Wolfie, w- what's his name? Wolf. Of course. Yeah. 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 Wolf, yeah. Wolf I, I, radio. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He actually also a Serb, a Serb like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, um, man, oh, oh, ladder range. She still follows me on Snapchat. Actually. I've, I never yeah, really talked yeah. to her, but she like sometimes like looks at my Snapchats. I'm, yeah, I'm still in touch with her. Actually. We still talk from time to time. Yeah, she kind of she got out of the whole true sphere. I think there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, I guess you could say uh, social issues between a lot of us back in the day. If, if I'm being honest, yeah. So she just decided to stay away from the whole thing. She's kind of got off social media, but you no, know, we do still talk though. She's doing pretty wonderful. She wrote a couple <laughs> books, right? Like a fantasy novels or yeah. something. Yeah. Young and adult. children's books, yeah. Yeah. She's literally uh yeah, she's an actual author. Yeah. She's gone and done that. All self published too. Yeah. Good for her. Good for her. Yeah, she was nice. I, I liked her. And then uh uh I don't even know. There's so many people, to be honest. Like Yeah, I mean it, it's interesting though how I'm starting to see a lot of us are starting to kind of come back together. And it's it's I think it's a good thing. I think a lot of us did kind of kind of sat aside like i mean like you can only shout from the rooftops for so long before you just feel completely fucking demoralized and like just like oh uh, you know and you just kind of what, what am i doing i'll just watch the ship sink for from a distance you know well that's actually <laughs> I, made, up I made i made the comment uh yesterday that we just watched watch it go like a viking funeral you know <laughs> you know <laughs> just, but <laughs> yeah i, I mean but, uh, uh, that brings up a good topic go um um Oh, this conspiracy occult Illuminati and New World Order. Uh, now, now this stream is definitely uh, like shadow banned after reading your name, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he, I st- hey, listen. I I still get I still get hits for uh, stuff I did ten years ago. Like I literally got I got really? a community guideline strike for something I did ten freaking years ago, man. I was just like, what, like. Like somebody just like bounced into my channel, found this thing I wrote or did, and then sent me a community guideline strike. It's like, oh man, I've had so much old material removed for that, and it's like then I get I get grounded for a week or two weeks, and then I can't stream, and then it's like okay, finally get back on, and then something else I did ten years ago gets found, and then they freaking do it again. Do you guys remember um, uh, June? Uh, um, hold on. Um, yeah. yeah. You know she passed away. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really sad. But um, I, I missed her. Yeah, because lot- I miss her because I, I we used to talk like just me and her all the time. And you know that, yeah. Robert. I think you've been on a few con- of our conversations. But um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We- she was. She was. She was a dear friend, and it was sad to see uh, to see her go. Yeah. But um, that that reminds me though, it brings up a topic that uh, like like I think is kind of important, like the deatomization, because especially since COVID, um, you know what like atomization is, like social atomization, where that's just it was getting bad before, and we were sort of mm-hmm. I guess we were I I mean I hate to say it, but we were all kind of like maybe pioneers of that back in the 2014 mm-hmm. Google. 2015 google hangout days where you know people's personality and social life gets into the digital sphere but what happens is there's so many niche topics now that you can discover on the internet whether it's subcultures music uh political views whatever it may be that everybody instead of having one 
uh, unified cultural perspective on the world or even spiritual perspective on the world. It's sort of like uh, decentralized, which which is uh, most people would think it's like a good thing, uh, but it's decent. It's not because it's decentralized into all these little niche sort of areas of, of culture where nobody can relate to anybody anymore. So, you know, if you go out in public, it used to be like, oh, what is the latest song we could, we, everybody knows, or the latest movie everybody saw, or the latest, um, you know, event everybody knew or was talking about, whatever. Now it's just so different with all these different subcultures that people can't relate anymore. And this is breaking down society, the cohesion that people have or used to have for, for like a nation or a region or, or a people. Um, and so, you know, this is part of, this is, I don't think this is good. Right? I don't think this is actually good. Like th there's some good elements of it where, you know, you had a unified vision uh, for a country, but it was oftentimes the elites playing the entire population off uh, to control them. Um, so, so it wasn't, it wasn't good because it usually for the most part, in most cases, like the best intentions weren't behind it, but at least people could relate to each other, you know, and, you know, in, in your life generally, like you, you had a lot more in common. Now it's kind of like you meet somebody, um, and, and there, there's, there's not as much in common. And then plus a lot of these things that used to be like sort of meetup areas, um, whether it be church or, you know, the barber shop or like a coffee shop that everybody in the actual neighborhood used to meet up at, or would, you know, uh, you could meet people there. You could just go hang out there. Um, that has gone away. Uh, so, I mean, in some cases you might still have some of that, but it was a common place back then. And now it's kind of like hard to find. Um, so I think actually what, and this is um, a lot of this, I, I kind of learned from um, the distributist. I don't know if you guys know about his channel. He has a really good channel. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, check him out. If you ever get a chance, like a phenomenal channel, he's my favorite. He's probably my favorite YouTuber. Um, and so like, a lot of what people can do to sort of heal, you know, society right now is to actually like meet up with people in real life and, um, um, I guess form a sense of community. Uh, so I think that's a really big like deal. And, and like, I, I'm all for it. like, obviously talking to you guys digitally, this is all good, but people should be having like an in-person meetup group. Um, in their local area, mm -hmm. um, whether it's like right now for me, it's church. Like I found a really, really good church and like, I'm good like you. bonding with these people. It's phenomenal. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're trying to, you know, do the, do the Lord's work here. So like, um, so, so, you know, there's all different kinds of things. So church is a good one though, but yeah, the, just having that sort of, uh, you know, uh, in real life, um, community is is super important that's like how to fight the system right now because the system wants exactly atomized atomized individuals who are just um consumers of of content and of uh mindless you know even certain dissident political views if they're all different if all you have all these dissident political views that are anti-establishment that are all just so different they can't unify to do anything against the uniparty or the, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the globalists or whatever, then they've got you, you know, because you're, you're divided to certain yeah. extent. I mean, even as we're talking, like it's coming to my mind, like guys like Russell Brand, where it's like, let's say all you did was watch Russell Brand every day. And like, that's great. Like, at least you're somewhat awake, but you know, whereas somebody who, it who watches, becomes, yeah. It yeah, it becomes an echo chamber, basically. And uh, we, we saw that throughout 2014 to 2017, like the, the the spread of topics and spread of subjects and the echo chambers just increased in numbers. Like instead of being a unified front, everybody was too busy arguing over points of their own uh, area of knowledge rather than trying to learn from each other. It was, well, that's it not that's not actually thing. That's not an echo chamber. That's that's I think echo chamber would be like defined as some a bunch of people who agree. But but yeah, I you're right though. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like sort of a reverse and, and, echo chamber. Yeah. 
and from the old days, Cerebral Pisces is with us. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, Robert. How you doing? Can you can you guys hear me? Oh, surviving every okay. day above ground is good. Yeah, you sound great. Very good. I, I got a different mic this time. Oh, Apparently, cool, I wasn't cool, coming cool. Using, clear, but I'm I'm using Restream. The audio is better here. I had some audio issues with my OBS, so I just figured instead of using a complex system, I just kept it simple for this. <laughs> but agree with you, but, uh, uh, hey. resisting the reset. I want to call you proud from the old uh, yeah, you can you can call me press it's good it's cool uh i uh took a stab at uh, showing up at administration meetings during uh talking to different parents getting them in contact with you know other resources uh james o'keefe and all these other guys and i am together and just kind of trying to inspire people because they and the starting to meet up, uh, go up to the politicians down when they're meeting in session. Last Monday, a bunch of them called out, and Denver's gotten so dangerous, so it's really hard for us to go down down there with camera gear and everything. I'm not gonna go second of all because I can't carry uh. my firearm on the Capitol grounds, so it's not gonna be. It looks like LA now down there, it's tent cities everywhere, it smells like urine, uh, and shit. yeah, it, taking. Just <laughs> chances at going out. Another thing I did was um, I immediately went to all my neighbors, found out who all was uh, concerned about what was going on. Kind of uh, co small concerts for the kids, trying to get everybody to, uh, back together, reminding them why we have a community. And uh, there were in this, actually, you know, I was getting other fellow Christians together as well. It was probably one of the most. Uh, experiences ever you know taking this chance and then it actually inspired others to sources and then you know seeing the vaccine clinics getting shut on fox news and all this stuff i didn't think i'd have that uh it was it it's hard to take courage when you're by yourself to go into a group and be like speaking out loud but like you can make ripples just the way you guys were doing online in a day so i took a lot of pointers from you guys yeah, man, that is, I mean, kudos. And that is exactly the solution, exactly what you just said. And, and it doesn't even always technically have to, in my opinion, at least it doesn't even always have to be like a political thing, you know, Ooh. just getting mm -hmm. together with neighbors and, you know, there might be certain, there might be certain people that, that, that are true believers that may, you know what I mean by that, right? Like true believers of the establishment narrative mm -hmm. that like, right. that aren't just going along to get along that might not be able, you might have to be watch out for that. But like, you know, um, yeah. but other than that, really, uh, I mean, the political action is great too. And especially like faith, faith can be such a great unifier and that I think, right now like especially in america i think that is a part of the solution people um you know christians specifically getting together yeah. and um you know um praising praising god and doing god's work like um yeah it, it, you got to put yourself out there though like especially if you don't know anybody yeah. that's the thing like um uh you know i i, I like, like I, I've said before, I just moved up here. It's really been like four or five months now, so I can't say that I've just moved up here anymore, really. But um, <laughs> you know, it's, I keep saying that. I got, I got, like, I got, I got to update my stories yeah, too because I've been it's getting more. I got to update my but. thing. You know, like it's getting more and more like night and you now you're like kind of. <laughs> um, but like, um, yeah. So like, part of it was was trying to find friends you know like and and um i actually do have one friend that lived up here so i have him but like really finding a community and started going to this church and it's, it's been really good and you know uh like imagine going to like a like a, a house party sort of thing or like a house church get together and you don't know anyone there and you're walking in they're all like oh who are you Who's like you're at, you're at our house yeah. like there's 10 of us yeah, it was intimidating, but I did it and I made like good friends with a lot of good people. And now it's all, it's all good, you know? So, so it, it, it takes, it takes putting yourself out there, but it's things like that. Even, you know, um, uh, it, like interest groups, um, and a lot of this can be organized on social media too. Like, you know, you mm -hmm. can use that as a tool, but that's the thing. It, 
the deatomization has to occur and a lot of it could be organized. We can, these are supposed to be tools, right. That we can use to our advantage that, that will, you know, help us be better humans and help us live a more fulfilled life instead of being slaves to the technology and, and becoming atomized and just you know, this, this, individualistic consumer that has nothing in common with anybody. So um, I think that's sort of the next layer of this, of this, um, Mm -hmm. of, of where this is going, you know, like a lot of people will say like, what's the next, you know, it it was COVID and before it was, you know, all these psyops and all these other things, this is a Trump thing and all this like, well, no, the next like phase of resistance isn't trying to get the word out on YouTube. Like we were in 2015, Right. I don't think, I mean, mm-hmm. we can still do that, but I, I don't think that's like the, 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 what do you call it? The tip of the spear. I think it's in person meetups. I really do. And yeah. a lot of it is yeah. going to be political and a lot of it's going to be faith based and even just the general interest thing too. But, um, and, and, and just, and just local, like local, aspects like you know road building uh you know what's who, who who's doing this who's doing this in town like dealing with some local issues too like i want to plan on doing that here as well like have like a sit down podcast with the community and discuss community stuff you know um ooh, getting some feedback sounds like you're djing yourself <laughs> what's a- is that me coming out of somebody um i don't know if it's me i'm just i'm just i'm just muting people one by one that's me i think right i muted myself for a second uh, i think it's uh resist the reset are you on speakers you got a feedback loop <laughs> does it say plug plug him <laughs> yeah that it, it, it's 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 you tom <laughs> that's weird i've never heard it do anything like that before strange you want to bop it back in maybe you just oh no it's gone now it's gone yeah say say something hello oh yeah, yeah we good. still hear you whoa that was wait wait yeah. so did it just like go I think it just did a feedback loop, I think, because something something that got okay. Said. Yeah, I don't know what just happened. I just hit like power on my computer. I think it just froze on me or something. I have no clue. Sorry. Yeah, still got you. Still, you're still there. So. I don't know how. I thought I was gonna have to restart the computer, but um. Uh, but yeah. Sorry about that. What was I saying? What was you saying? I don't know. Oh, we were, we were talking, we were talking about, about getting decoupled. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I know we were just talking about. We were were talking about. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I think we were talking about deatomization. Oh, local politics. I remember now. Um, Local politics, right? 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 Yeah, Yeah, and that's that's what I, you know, like like, since I moved here and like started like meeting people here in the community and that, like you know, that's the next stage that I want to go into. Because a, you know, it's a smaller population. There's a lot of things here, business-wise, that can be done that people don't have to drive out of town for. Like, so we're kind of looking at things that we can organize and uh, create. You know, um, like a, 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 a community-based, you know, kind of uh, uh, speakers' corner, if you would. You know, that kind of a kind of a concept you know so that's that's where my mindset is now that now that i'm here and i'm starting to get reestablished again um thanks for all the viewers by the way i want to say thank you because now my analytics are starting to look a little better they were looking like a a dead horse at one point but uh thank you (laughs) but uh, i do appreciate it um anyway yeah uh that being said though like with the whole reestablishing myself i got some office space i was gonna that was gonna basically resume renting in in february and going into that and have a business front end for people to come see me get cards made flyers made that whole kind of thing like like you were saying tom like to integrate with the community and then deal with community issues like and then it becomes real like that becomes a cohesive unit yeah and uh I i think i think i think it really um 
well, two twofold. Uh, forming relationships is, is just really important. And like honest, like real relationships with 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 people you can rely on and and people that can rely on you, or you can build that trust. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if it's not based in anything political, uh, or or, mm-hmm. or you know, or spiritual, whatever it is, yeah. I think that's just so important. But, you know. Yeah, and if you establish that trust first, then the openness or agreeability towards, you know, adverse thoughts or adverse subjects or topics would be more approachable. Like, well, that, I mean? and like, I if, think, I think there's way more of us than, than people think like, right. I, so I don't know about you guys, but I post this on Facebook. I think I actually post this on Twitter too today. In fact, which is kind of funny um, that pretty, pretty much. And like, I'm, dead serious pretty much everyone i interact with in my life is like awake like everyone i i, I don't know how i i and I, I am kind of curious like if i'm lucky or if that's like a normal thing but um yeah it's just maybe that's just how because i'm just i've been this way for so long it just ended up that way after like you know it's been 15 years now <laughs> like i don't know this probably has something to do with it but like you know even my family like pretty much my my mom my dad my be- my best friends people i'm starting to meet up with here my friends back back you know two hours south in rhode island or whatever um you know to to the point where it's like um it's hard for me sometimes and i think maybe this um maybe this this why it's it's harder for me to make content now it's hard for me to put myself into the the mindset of somebody who who isn't awake any anymore you know like like i can't like imagine what these people are thinking anymore like i'm just not in that world i'm so far removed from it now and it's been so long that it's kind of like all right like how do i how do i create content now that can actually wake somebody up i i don't even know where they're coming from right like if I don't, if I can't relate to where they're coming from anymore, it's like, it's like now I'm just making content for you guys or, or like everyone who's like awake sort of thing. Like it's, it's kind of like, I don't even, I haven't actually put up a video in like a, like a month or so, but, but like it, it really is sort of like that now. And so, but the key is to, I, I think that's how you fight the system right now is forming these relationships and even local politics in and of itself like uh, I'm mm-hmm. here in New Hampshire and we have the free state project and I hang out with those guys every now and then um, where they're, they're all libertarian sort of anarcho capitalists. Um, I don't know if you guys know about the free state mm-hmm. project, but um, it's this uh, local mm-hmm. initiative to turn New Hampshire. It already is pretty much the freest state, but to just make it as free as possible. And um, again, I'm not even really a, I don't, I don't even know if I consider myself a libertarian anymore, really, but um, they're allies. I see them as allies mm. because in general, that's sort of what I want in my community. Um, but mm. yeah. Freedom it's, Fest so, or any of, not to interrupt you, have you heard of Freedom Fest or any of those uh, giant conventions where all the libertarians and anarchists are getting together? I, that's where I, that's actually I've where heard I of, met. I met James O'Keefe there, uh, blowers and so that's how I started connecting with all of them. And then it, dude, it was crazy. It was like, I had Infowars behind me at one moment. We had Dr. Drew in front of us and th- we were asking him like, Hey, did you get the vaccine? You know, question to us, but I, I, I digress. JP Sears was there. I was connecting with him. It's crazy. What places last, this last year was in uh, Vegas. I, di- I didn't um, cause I was just financial reasons, but I'm just, and then get more involved with it but it like talk that are trying to build settlements like just get just want to be free free to express ideas out of this yet everyone from like bitcoin showing up there it was one of the craziest events i've ever been a part of that's cool man yeah. uh, so what, what um what um it's called freedom fest how many i i've heard of it but like it, like who holds it and like what I, I, I like I, I'm not that aware of it, you know. You, we'd have to, I'd have to look that. Up. Like I, I didn't expect it to fold out the way it did. I was just just invited randomly, showed up, uh, you know, about two weeks prior, and then just bought my ticket to it and was their fellow. Uh, I don't know what to call ourselves, truther or whatever, but um, awake. I guess we should just say awake. 
just when I got <laughs> there, you know, um, I had already bought tickets to meet with JP Sears personally here, have him do like a small comedy show with us, all group with us, got to, you know, sign. And it just kept unfolding. Like we went to a giant uh, convention center in South Dakota and, and uh, basically JP Sears asked us all if uh, we had, who out of all been vaccinated not i think it was one person their hand and he freaking was vicious he's like oh well we're all gonna live longer than you or so he said something really hilarious my god that poor person has got to be so like feeling embarrassed right now their, right? their hand went right down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, but, that takes, i mean no i didn't it <laughs> takes balls though you gotta give them credit like true story yeah, yeah no um no, i'm not exactly sure who who throws it i know there's several different Different like libertarian of like conventions that uh, take place. Ones. I'd have, have you ever to, heard like, of uh, Pork Fest? No. You ever heard of a uh, Pork Fest? No. Okay, so Pork Fest is um the libertarian sort of. It's like a libertarian sort of um, festival here in New Hampshire every year. Um, and there's a lot of big libertarian names. You know, Luke Rudkowski's always there. Um, you know, you, you're going to see a lot of uh big names it's like in fact like one of the places they shoot um that i was at i was at a few weeks back that you know, luke stays at and stuff it's about 20 minutes down the road from me um but yeah it's a uh, oh, right on pork fest is yeah, yeah pork fest is cool it's more up north uh here in new hampshire and if you if you want get tickets man i'll i'm i actually still got to get my tickets but i'll be going okay um i'd be down probably yeah check yeah, check it, man. Check it out, man. You can come to New Hampshire. It'll be a good time. There's so much. There's so much to do up here. It's unbelievable. Like snowboarding, hiking, all that, all that good stuff. It's like it's amazing. So, like, I love it. Like, ever since I moved up here, it's it's like I've really found my groove. Uh, and it's just like you know, this is probably I'm probably gonna be sticking around here as you know for for a long time. You know, so. Um, yeah. But and then what else was i gonna say yeah there's this pork fest. and that kind of reminds me of the freedom fest thing i don't know if you guys remember but uh i ended up at, back when trump was elected i somehow got a ticket to deplorable and i was like live streaming oh. at deplorable do you guys remember deplorable yeah i remember it vaguely, vaguely. It, it was yeah, like this vaguely. obscure yeah it, it was like this obscure like uh but it wasn't obscure at the time. It was like a huge, just looking back, like people don't talk about it much, but it was like this gigantic swanky party in the middle of DC on the night of Trump's inauguration, or it might've been the night before, but um, in 2017, where all of the people who like the base of like the Twitter crowd, the YouTube crowd that got them elected, were all, all there dressed in like tuxedos and stuff like that. And, I was, I was, uh, streaming and like, there was all these journalists and it was like, I met so many people and uh, like I, I like in the stream, it's like me, like I, I go by like Lauren Southern. I say hello to Lauren Southern to like, uh, like Luke Rudkowski, like, um, a few other people. Um, yeah, it, it was a, it was a, a good time. And it's just funny because nobody really talks about it anymore, but it was like this big giant thing. It was like a, it was almost like historical, like how many people were there. And it was, um, uh, you know, everyone like the, the swanky dress and everything. It was a good time. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. I was going back to, uh, to, uh, in my mind, I was going, going back to when I first got here and I couldn't find a place to live cause there wasn't much housing. So I actually spent like 74 days in the bush with me and my dog built a shelter out in the woods and uh i took a lot of footage so that'll be coming soon uh i just have to get busy and do some editing and i swear to god i can't be arsed to do it <laughs> right now but uh was that yeah, like during uh, the summer that was during the summer right yeah yeah i actually it was september that i moved out there and a couple weeks after the first couple snowfalls was when i left in november it was like the middle of november when i got out of the woods and actually got myself into a actual house with a physical roof. <laughs> wow, man. But, uh, did, so yeah, did it was you, pretty wild. Did you, so was it, was it tough, like living out in the snow? Like I can't, I, I feel um, like. It, it got there. Like it was, it got, it got to the point where it was like, like yeah, yeah, it got there. <laughs> yeah. 
it, yeah. it got uncomfortable at one point. It was like, yeah, things have to change very soon because I'm not doing this forever in a day. But uh, yeah. uh, at the at the end of it, though, it was interesting because, I mean, I always had a town that was like five minute walk away from me. So I could go in, I could get stuff. So I would go in daily, get the things I need for that day and then go back. I'd always have firewood going. I'd be lugging. I was jacked, man. At the end of 74 days, like dragging like uh, deadfall and uh, and uh, beached, you know, wood. Like I, I was getting pretty fit, man. Like I was I was pretty jacked. Nice. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I got a little soft since then. But uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you, we got to get you back out there, dude. Come on. Get oh, you, yeah. Get you. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the middle of a Canadian winter, dude, like. Oh, I hate the snow just to begin with. <laughs> you know what you got to do, man. Here. If I were you, like, no, like, I'd probably just move to like Florida or something, find a way to get down there. Like, do you still need a vaccine? To, like, I think you do, right? Mm, I'm not sure. They, I think they dropped the mandates to fly out now. I'm not completely 100% sure because it's, it's a lot of fog, like, in the whole thing. Like, it's, they had this app. Like if you're returning to Canada or coming into Canada, they had this stupid uh, Canada app or something, whatever. I can't remember the stupid name of it, but it was it was being enforced by the Canadian Health uh, Association or something. And it wasn't necessarily a requirement. They would just funnel you into into their direction and then they'd be like oh if you're not vaccinated then you know if you're not vaccinated then you have to pay like you know exorbitant fines or this or that it was horrible like and like i said like the rules have become so murky like you know from province to province you know like it's just it's a, it's, it's difficult to navigate like i'd actually have to do my research but i don't think so i think people are flying out now without needing a vaccine but uh they might still try to get you coming back in i don't know well i thought maybe like the u.s still had um a vaccine uh requirement for any uh not not migrants or visitors um unless you're an illegal coming up through the southern border of course um mm -hmm. i'm sure I, I don't know for sure though i said don't quote me on that i actually don't know i just vaguely remember hearing that yeah. like, a few weeks back but I don't know. What's it like in uh, Serbia, FYGP? Is it um, any like vaccine mandate to leave or come in or? No, absolutely not. It has all been scrapped for some time. I think during the worst days of COVID, you had those mandates, but you could also do a test. And that is what I used to do all the time when I had to travel somewhere. Uh, also in Switzerland, it wasn't quite as strict. And what was interesting in Serbia, you could actually get all the vaccines. You could get the Pfizer one, you could get the Moderna one, you could get the Chinese one, and you could get the Russian one. So a lot. Oh, it's people... like like the thirty the thir the thirty two flavors. It's like yeah. Baskin Robbins. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> a lot of people they opted for the either the Chinese or the Russian one just simply because it wasn't based on mRNA. It was more like I would have gotten all four, dude. I would have just been like, ah, oh, give me just, all four. Let's go. <laughs> just get Jack. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Yeah, you more can do that. Man. Nobody would stop you from that. I'm sure. I'm sure about that. But I know people from my family that like took the either the Chinese or the Russian one. And I mean, the Chinese one apparently was really weak and didn't protect you at all, but uh had no side effects so far uh, no visible side effects i don't know if there is any in the future but well okay I mean, um, the one... so do you guys want to hear something of course i'm gonna i'll word this in the correct way don't you worry robert j morris so um <laughs> I, and this is this is what i was told so um the um who was it uh a friend of mine who's involved with the free state project uh, who was uh, military, um, who was in charge of giving the U.S. military, I think it was actually the, the uh, New Hampshire National Guard um, vaccines, uh, the COVID jab. Uh, I think they were, I forget if he said they were Moderna or, or Pfizer, but um, he, it was one of those two. And he said that he had, so he quit because he, because he didn't, and this is all according to him. 
I don't con- condone this. The, you know, you l- listen to the WHO. This is just some crazy guy that I know. Uh, so he said that he uh, um, basically had access to the back end systems and could see that some, in fact, most of the, uh, the the COVID jabs that he was giving the military personnel were placebos, but a certain percentage weren't. And so he, this is what he said. And, um, he said that, you know, uh, he, he would see a lot of adverse reactions instantly, um, with the ones that, that weren't placebos. So, um, it's really kind of interesting that, uh, you know, somebody would say something like that. Outrageous, huh? Yeah. Um, it's funny, but it's funny you say that cause I was looking into the placebo idea And apparently they did a lot of double blind uh, placebo experiments too. So even a lot of people like this is just starting to come in, like the data is just starting to come in. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's not, uh, it's not really up for debate because we don't really know what we're talking about. Um, But apparently there's a lot of double blind placebo um, uh, vaccines given. So that way, even a lot of people in society getting it, didn't really get the vaccine. There's a, a tremendous number who didn't receive it. And those who did also had adverse reactions. So right. I don't know. According like to said, him, he told still me, coming in. Yeah, he told me that he, and this is something my brother actually said like a couple years ago too, where I, where I kind of glazed over and he's not even like really into like any of that info. He just kind of like said this, he said, but the, this dude who's in the military said that, um, uh, like it was, uh, according to him, just like saline and, and, and sugar or something like that. And mo and most of them, and, you know, according to him, he said, that's why it would explain, uh, you know, not everybody having, you know, serious complications short or long term. Um, you know, a lot of the people just according to him, didn't, you know, get anything at all, whether it's good or bad or what. So, um, right. I mean, that kind of makes sense if you're coming from that perspective, like, like a theory, like theoretically. So, uh, yeah. And he, he swears by this, you know, and he definitely, he, I mean, he, he, he's a free state project guy who, who like, like definitely was in the military in charge of giving these out, which is, is, is pretty wild. It's, you know, uh, somebody's, coming out and saying that so yeah so that's why like a lot of people if they end up waking up and they have what they would call like vaccine regret um you know some might say that like you know they might not have anything to worry about in that regard you know Mm -hmm. exactly exactly um and i think uh you know it's food for thought too also to know that they wouldn't be at if they weren't time sensitive uh like the jabs and the boosters and all this if they weren't time sensitive then there's a good potential for us to come out of this okay and just it'll just kind of we can push it push, push it behind us you know what i mean just kind of get rid of it um that's what i'm hoping for i mean and on the i i, I on catastrophic contagion um well here's the thing right okay the the essence of what a vaccine is supposed to be meant to do and it's on paper anyway it's a good idea and i'm all for it if there was a contagion they're shoveling bodies off the streets i'd be like sign me up <laughs> like you know what i mean um, give it to me are you talking you know what i mean are you talking about like the, um the, the war game by game scenario yeah i mean they had the hopkins Gages university game. Yeah. The, oh. Oh, that. Okay. Yes. John yeah, Hopkins like, University. Like, sorry, I I miss. I, okay, I misunderstood. Sorry. Yeah. No. Go, uh, I, it was like uh, in 2020. They had another one right before COVID. Uh, one of those mock yeah, uh, sort of uh, pandemic. Event 201. It was called. So there was this other one in in 2022. So. I don't know. I think they're prepping us for something to come for sure. I, I'm sure that the next pandemic bec- will come probably before 2030. And uh, also what I'm worried about is actually a uh, cyber attack that uh, actually Klaus Schwab talked about and foreshadowed. And if you remember the Rockefeller document for 
scenarios for the future i think it was called mm -hmm. uh from 2010 which basically predicted a corona like virus uh one of the other scenarios was a cyber attack that would just uh cause blackouts in in lots of parts of europe and the united states so possibly we will have that happen and i'm sure that russia is going to be blamed for it so you always Probably. have those exercises right before something happens and i'm sure uh this catastrophic contagion event uh is perhaps also foreshadowing something because event 201 did that uh, i'm just reading off the right. web page right here uh, yeah it's again addressing a fictional pandemic set in the near future participants grappled with how to respond to an epidemic located in one part of the world that then spread rapidly becoming a pandemic with higher fatality rates than COVID-19 so that is also something I speculated about will they come out with a virus with a higher fatality rate and since everybody has been sort of desensitized I think most people uh, see COVID as a joke uh, they're probably less likely to follow the new measures implemented once this more deadly virus comes in. And if you ever listened to Bill Gates, uh, he talked a lot of times about viruses and foreshadowed them. And uh, at one point, actually, For, he said, I remember he I remember he said in three months when the new variant comes out, it's almost like he's announcing an album release. Anyway, go yeah. On, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually wants <laughs> ridiculous. That, uh, if we had a virus that was as deadly as the Spanish flu, then you, we would all be yeah. basically. So I hope that that is not in the works. But if it is, then I don't know. Then the elements they, they will could be, probably... well, they got the food right. They could be putting <laughs> mRNA stuff into the food, and then that could be a reaction. The like the there could be several things they could do to like you know a bunch of people people to die off. They could also beginning just scare everybody with just numbers and then like the hospitals are sitting there empty right. but i i do think that they're going to do something more practical but i agree also that it, it does look like they're going to go for some kind of cyber warfare kind of thing they've been kind of like amping that up and then when they're attacked you see them attacking the power the sub power stations and everything you know and they don't even have to do it like cybernetically they could just, i don't mean to say cyber in the cyberspace really go to up to a, a the couple of power stations shut it down and be like oh it was hacked and like get that going there's elements that they can play on and then, well just could be kind of be a little bit uh focused also as well as the programming they'll be putting out through net and machines right because like right before the pandemic they had contagion they had all these things that were gonna like uh replay and get people like so that they'd have that mindset because we we know the television the screens are at just manipulating people's behavior uh through the entertainment yeah i uh i had stayed at a, a super eight a couple a few days ago they were taking a friend back to the airport and i just stayed there overnight but uh i couldn't believe like the first time i watched cable tv and i swear like six years like the first time i just flipped it on and i could not believe my eyes like it was it was just garbage like and it was i don't know man it was just so piecemealed and spoon fed i couldn't believe it like it was wow i noticed they're holding yeah, I, yeah. The have you noticed they're holding they're holding on to releasing certain video games right now um which are meant to like not only program people but keep you distracted they've really upped the game on the dopamine up reuptake in these these uh programs that right like i was telling um robert j morris a little bit about this side punk game i was checking out a little bit about and it, they were there it's all about like how america's fallen how their cities and all this stuff so they're prepping people for like you know as you know, like new reality there's a new couple new games coming coming out once that name alone kind of interesting mm. bioshock games did which went into all the different mk ultra uh, project delta there's several uh, race wars and all this other stuff and a, a different alternative form of american history with the vox populi and stuff so we got a russian version coming out now ai mm -hmm. unit pretty much goes live just starts taking over everything all the machines and everything are then compromised and everything 
and they have to send in this brand new secret agent that's been his hands. So he's already been himself connected. You look at Westworld and the, how they had an AI controlling everybody. So like, I don't know, maybe there's also uh, an element of the AI playing into all this. Well, there's a new show that I'm just, I'm watching. I think I'm on episode six or seven now. It's called The Peripheral. I don't know if you've uh, heard of that one yet. And I want to highlight, I think it's episode four. And in episode four, there's a sequence right near the end. It's right at the climactic end of the episode where they detail out the sequence of events to take place from 2032 up to 2075. And not that the dates matter, because you know they don't, but 2037, the blackouts start. 2041, uh, world plague. Uh, then, uh, yeah, and it goes, then Then there's um, like a gray goo kind of scenario, like right after that. And then, yeah, it, it's weird how they just map out this sequence and it's very visual. It's, it's, it was, I was like going, wow, is this like, well, you know what it is. It's, <laughs> we, we've talked about predictive programming in the past that w- w- regarding uh, TV and Hollywood um, production. But uh, yeah, it was just really weird because it was almost like they're spelling out the sequence. And I yeah. was reminded. I, uh, I was going to say, Richie so like- Dubs. Oh, Richie yeah, Dubs. Richie Dubs said, ready for the blackouts. Yeah, and I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. They told us when that'll happen in that show. <laughs> but anyway, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, so like a lot of this, I think I think we're going to see all of that. But but what um, what you got to realize is that like it's all go- going to be blamed on climate change. That's like the main key. So like the, like blackouts, pandemic, all of these things um, and Sudden sort deaths. of like it, they, they have this convenient. Yeah. Sudden deaths, um, the collapse of civilization and the cultural cohesion and just like the, the psychological issues. All of this is going to be blamed on climate change and, and humanity as, as a whole. So so it's going to be like this. It's going to be like, oh, why is it that, um, you know, uh, meat at the grocery store is now. 25 bucks a pound for chicken or, or like what, you know, why is it that, um, there's a hurricane that hits, which was probably weather modified, uh, you know, uh, some region with a large population and then, you know, it, it's, it's all, it's all destroyed. Uh, why is it that, you know, your gas bill for your stove, of course, they're now trying to say, you know, it's, it's a dissonant, uh, it's a dissonant act to cook food on your stove or something. Um, you know, why is, yeah, why yeah. is it, why is that so high and why, why, or why is it unavailable completely? And you can't heat your home in the winter in Canada or in Germany or whatever it is, it's going to be blamed on co- climate change. And then the blackouts and all of that cyber attacks, all of this, it's, it, it, they, they might add a little bit of Russia in there maybe, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be blamed on climate change. So, so a lot of, you know, a lot of this is going to be, uh, it, blamed on climate change. And I, I, this is like such an important video and I've gone over it probably, I think three times in the history of my channel. Um, and it is just so it, it it's like, I don't want to say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a, uh, what do you call it? Um, I, I don't even, I can't think of the word, but it's just so have important. You, it, have planned you seen planned planned obsolescence. Yeah. We were no, talking no, no, about plan, this the no, other night no. actually when we were going, no, not planned obsolescence. Planned Opolis is the name of oh, the video. Sorry. It's it's called Planned Opolis and it's um put out by Forum for the Future and it's a cartoon put out by it, Forum for the Future. It's like one of these globalist groups. It kind of dissolved, but it was like a UN affiliated World Economic Forum group from like 2009 that put out this video Planned Opolis that told us everything what we're going to go through for agenda 2030 um is it a happy just lays it out slave she loved her life despite having no re- i'm just reading some of the descriptions from facebook on it sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you yeah what watch plandopolis man it, it it will shock you to the core because not only that this came out in like 2008 something like that and it uh, they even taught i mean just everything in that lays out the society for agenda 2030 and uh you know they talk about freedom ghettos they talk about the ai deciding your what your job's going to be they talk about the carbon credits the fact that you can only eat meat on your birthday they talk about you know all of these things 
something in 2008. That's yeah. kind of interesting because in the same year, that's when they released Wally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense, right? And yeah, they've they've had so this they were, vision for yeah. a while. I would say that like they really, of course, you know, they've been up to no good for a long time. And you know, when we say they, the globalist types, but like the um the real vision for Agenda 2030 and how it would be implemented specifically really came about in the mid 2000s and they really started figuring out like how they're going to do this and like plan it in a way that's that was more formal and more out in the open and that's why they released Planopolis it's like it, it, it's just, just they just laying out what they what it's going to be like they talk about freedom okay. ghettos where the people who don't get you know the vaccine or don't agree with the AI or uh or don't want ca- carbon credits controlling their life um, uh, live where, you know, they can't get a job because they're not uh, part of that, um, that cult, so to speak, of course, but they lay it all out in a good light in a, in a, in a fantastic mm-hmm. way. Like you're not, you're not going to have a car. You're going to have your either, what was it? Bicycle. And, and you, you're going to grow, um, you know, a self-sustainable and they, they, that buzzword again, magical words, mm-hmm. sustainable, um, developed, um, um, like high rises where you grow your own food and all that, um, which, you know, they, I mean, I, I'm not even against that, but like they, they always add in these little things that sound kind of like feel good and, and, you know, to, yeah. to, to make it sound nice. But of course, you know, in have the end, guys, what is just, just, have you guys seen the new food pyramid they just put out where they just claimed lucky charm cereal has more nutrients than beef than steak. I no. am not kidding. <laughs> You gotta show me this. They literally dude. just released this. I'll look at. I'll find it. And I'll bring. I'll screen share it. But yeah, I'll, it's, I, it's, send me a link. Good. Yeah, I will. I'll put it in the chat. Right you now. can share your screen too. Yeah. Let me look it up. So, oh, yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, today I was just getting screen, and I was I was just thinking like, God bless that I live in the moment that where I can still eat meat because who knows yeah. how long I will be able to eat meat in the future and anybody else. I mean, you will have all of the uh, soy based uh, meats, all of the, you know, the impossible meat and all of that stuff. So that's not really a good thing. I mean, we know that there's estrogen um, in soy. So conspiracy, sorry, I got to interrupt. Conspiracy yeah. occult Illuminati New World Order Media Review said that Plantopolis came out in 2012. I I'm almost a hundred percent sure that is not true. I first saw it a hundred percent before 2012. It, the, you might be looking at a post that, um, uh, you know, says that, it, it, but that's erroneous. I know for a fact it was, it was like at least 2010 or before, but anyway, so I just wanted to say that just to clear it up. Watermelon is at the top. Watermelon has, yeah, out of all the fruits, it has the least amount of nutrients. And then you're looking at also, they have like MMs and our beef, like <laughs> whole milk is down here. And where's, uh, let's see, all the milk, I believe, is somewhere up on up here. Somewhere. Ground beef's at the bottom. Yeah, that is big, like ground. Yeah. Do, all right, one first of, of big, all, beef is a superfood. I, I knew you were going to, I knew you were when I showed this to you. You're going to be like, no way. <laughs> no, I'm triggered. I'm triggered right now. Like, I am so offended boiled by this. Poached, boiled poached eggs are uh, less healthy to, than, I believe, Lucky Charms, actually. Yeah, see? <laughs> Skinless chicken breast is also there. Like, it's, and by the way, if you look down here, the bottom says two bias, right? The things they want people to cut out of their uh, diet. Cheese. That's another really big thing middle class eats. Cheddar cheese. Give it a rest. I love my cheddar cheese. <laughs> this can't. Oh, who? I, I want to know everything. I I'm literally going to dedicate my week to like dissecting this. I this is shocking to me. <laughs> I, 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 I I am. I, I've never seen I, anything this crazy. I just saw this today because like I, I I work in uh, health and fitness. And uh, another great community to get involved in because there's so many people that were super pissed off that they couldn't work out. And it's very rare to yeah. talk, run into people that actually like were falling for everything that are going to gyms. They're actually, as uh, you say, a base, you know, um, here, I'm yeah. posting that in the chat for you. So 
you can look into it. But I, I, we asked our scientists to look into the data and come back with us why they're claiming Lucky Charms is healthier than beef. I was astronomically like, what? Like, I mean, that's part of my big diet too. I stay, stay, dude, as soon as the pandemic happened, I think I ate more steak than anything. It was kind of messed up, but I was just like, hey, who knows what's going to happen? I'm going to enjoy myself. For me, I'm well, going to have my steak. Look into like carnivore or keto diet. Uh, it, it helps me feel great. Uh, like I, I just always, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll go off and start eating like mixed nuts, uh, which aren't necessarily keto really. Um, cause mm. if you eat a lot of them, but when I'm just straight carnivore, usually it'll be like carnivore with a couple onions and lettuce. Like that's what I am right now. I feel the best. And the only reason I stray off that path is, is basically kind of like lack of discipline and just craving carbs. Um, but that is for most people, I think honestly, like just meat, eggs, vegetables, and maybe a couple fruit, best diet, period. And oh, maybe, absolutely. maybe get a little fat. Yeah. Maybe get an extra, a little extra fat in there. If you're doing a lot of, uh, strenuous, you know, work, whatever you're working out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, the, I mean, people will always want to argue about the most ideal diet. It's like meat, eggs, fruit, vegetables, dude, done. Like if you just stick yeah. to that, like, <laughs> I agree. With and that. Uh, people, some tuna people, as well, some uh, tuna steaks. That is, that is really good, actually. Yeah, uh, I love it. This is like free in there. Lots of uh, lots of good stuff. And if you look at how long the Japanese live, and they basically eat sushi all the time, and what is in sushi, you have a lot of tuna in there, and a lot of fish. So, I think uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I also prefer carnivore-based diets. Uh, I really do like uh, my salads and fruits, but other than eggs, meats, tuna, and nothing else, I'd, I don't really eat much bread or anything, or nor do I eat much, um, you know, cereals or anything like that. I never was a big fan of cereals because I, I was aware that like uh, Kellogg, did you know that the inventor of Kellogg's, Kellogg, he actually invented uh, cornflakes uh, for people to have less of a sex drive. Yeah, Absolutely. he wanted, yeah. He wanted yeah. people to yeah. stop they, masturbating. They put salt, Peter. I think. Yeah, Actually, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't see the. I don't see the logic there. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Probably. I, 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 I think it was salt, Peter, or something they put into the cornflakes. Like uh, I remember reading about this. I could be wrong, but yeah, I think it was something that they added to it, like salt, Peter. It was to to lower, uh, yeah, children's sex drive so they wouldn't jerk off of you would have seen that. whatever but on net <laughs> on netflix actually they put out this dark documentary about circumcision and they were going into like all these crazy things about how it's harder for men to masturbate it's harder for like you to get women pregnant there's a lot of like things that go into like having that foreskin and like you know they always prep uh i guess bill and melinda gates were part of the whole like thing off well it's because the penis gets dirty you have to remove that because you know they're just too stupid to take care of their own bodies and wash that part as their body. But, uh, you know, it's several, yeah, they, they, there's been several aspects of attacking food and then our civilization. I was actually just thinking about how we really do need to, how the masculine attractive body, right? Like that's, uh, to me being, they're, they're pushing that really hard. It's really big in the LGBTQ Z nonsense rabbit hole on Twitter and you it'll grow that these LGBT nonsense it's like they they all want to be fat and they all talk about getting fatter and fatter and they're pushing this all on the kids right now right as they're like about their sexual identity yeah. it's it's wild yeah and well Jordan Peterson got into trouble for uh for fat shaming a sports illustrated model which said you know this is beauty and it's like no he's not no, no, it's not. <laughs> it's just like, well, it's yeah. tough. Like, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, I don't know how many of you, you guys are single, but like, if you're on a dating app or, or just going out in, in public, or whatever, it's like, oh man, like almost all girls are fat nowadays. Like, it's like, they, it's, it's tough, you know, to find a girl who isn't like at least somewhat fat. Like, it never used to be that way. That's not normal. 
Like, you know, it's, yeah, it's, not, tough, it's, it's tough to find one who knows how to cook, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> fucking impossible. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least at least if, if she's got that going, she can be she can be a little bit chubby. That's all good. And like, well, I'm not thing, even yeah. a, a stickler for that. I Yeah. I, I, I was going to say, like, I, I I'm not say, even like, I. sorry, go ahead. No, right, yeah, I'll, I'll just go. Because, yeah, all right. So um, I think you might have like a delay. That's why uh, sometimes that happens, just so you know. But anyways, um, yeah, like I'm not even – like I used to be like a huge stickler on that, like all about like the the, the bikini uh, like like body sort of Gis- uh, Giselle, Brady sort of thing. Um, but but I'm more now a little more toward not, – definitely not fat or, or even chubby, just a little more like, you know, curvy. I think that's kind of right. in right now, just a little bit. Like when I say well, a little bit, I, I mean just like – I'd say that's healthy no, too because if you're going to raise a child, you need to have like the, the appropriate body fat to actually support that, right? Like we want yeah. that as men that want to like leave one of the the greatest things you can achieve in manhood, you know, and raising that. And that's reaching a new form of adulthood even because you're giving up even more of like – well, whatever things that like we fill up in our free You're time. giving up all <laughs> – yeah, you're giving up all your silly ways, uh, you know, and now you're achieving a new goal, and that's to, uh, you know, hope hopefully create somebody that is better off than yourself, you know? Like, that's, like, uh, I think the imperative, especially for Gen X and Gen Y, like, we have one job to do, and that's to leave this place a little bit better than we fucking found it, period. Mm-hmm. Like, there's one job, and that's it right there. No, you're you're on point right there, and uh, just uh, to sort of add, um, well, I don't know. In America, it's probably different, but here in Serbia, there's a lot of like really tall, uh, skinny girls. Some are also a bit on the Serbian girls are amazing. Yeah, they are really. I mean, I had girls that looked like supermodels, and uh, I don't I'm know booking how, a flight. But... Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> No, yeah, we're all going. Flight, we're flights going together. To Serbia. Flights to Serbia. Let's to Serbia. go. I mean, they are really difficult to get with, but uh, it's worth it because uh, here we have traditional women that actually won't go out with a guy uh, unless they have serious intentions with him, and you have to you have to prove yourselves to them. You have to like, uh, but I think it's it's worth it, and that's how how women should be. Um, dude guys hold on i i have to i have to interrupt because i actually went on a date today um and i just kind of want to tell this is this is what i'm talking about okay like i have so many stories from the past couple months from this stuff so um like i I don't i did i didn't even want to like do go on this date this girl she was like cute whatever but this is i just i'm saying this to illustrate like sort of the, the state of of what's going on like this dating scene right now because I'm in it, dude. And it is, it is, unless you're, you're, you're meeting like a girl at church or something, you, 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 they're all like are gone. So this girl, so she was cute, all that met up with her at uh, like Panera or whatever. We got like a coffee earlier today. Right. And she, she like within five minutes, she drops the bomb. She's married. Okay. So she, yeah, 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 yeah. married, legally married. And I'm like, oh, so, you know, and I'm like asking her about (laughs) stuff and she's like, well, yeah. So, and she's, she's like, yeah, well, uh, and this is like a, like a very pretty girl professional. She like manages a team of like, uh, what, uh, what'd she say? I don't even know, a psychiatrist or something like that. And so I'm like, oh, okay, so like, what are you like? Is this about like a non, a non-ethically, non-monogamous, whatever that is? Is that what this? And the guy literally just asked her that. And and by the way, this is right after me telling her like I'm a Christian and just got out of church. So she just just spelled it out, and I was like, okay. And so she's like, no, 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 no. I got I got separated, and me and my husband are separated. Uh, it's been two weeks. Two weeks two weeks two wow. weeks her and her husband got separated two weeks ago and i'm like oh wow, my fast mover god dude this is bad <laughs> so like well, you know what I, that means i right? just i just to humor actually go ahead 
her no, there must have been no substance it would be my guess and that's a lot of things and she's right already looking for maybe the new fling right because that well i want to jump right back in and just get like you know get that magic well i don't know i think actually i think it was wrong. something else and this this is this is this is what well let me let me explain you probably know what i'm talking about when i say this so um it it was the girl who married the guy that was her high school sweetheart that went through her entire uh late teens and er, and tw entire 20s because she was in her early 30s um being married i don't think she said she had kids though she probably doesn't want kids she doesn't seem like the type so um she went through her entire like 20s without you know being able to get out get around and party or something and so she kind of had like this modern mind breakdown where it was like oh my gosh i gotta get out there and sort of live or make up for the life i miss the good life of being a slut but that's that's sort of and you, you see that like i've seen that before where it's like um you know they want to relive their their early 20s over again because they were married or they had kids or something and they feel like they missed out when in reality they didn't miss out on anything but like right no. so not feeling fulfilled yeah, so I, yeah I, yeah i think that that's probably what it was and um oh, there was more to it oh, oh so what i started to do this is just kind of like the, the, the icing on the cake i started trying to evangelize to her to like get her to come to church and like like accept christ so that's what i started to kind of try to do so i started like she's agnostic so i was talking to her about that a little bit and and so i'm gonna hit her up i don't i, don't, I do not i'm not interested in this girl at all i just want to try to get her to church and try to get her like <laughs> saved that's like what i'm gonna try to do and i probably won't work but so like at the end of this week so i'm just gonna text her be like hey you should come to like church and try <laughs> so i'm the tinder evangelist boy so that's what i'm doing do they do still well, do the I, at your church? Like, cause like the my church, they gone all contemporary. So like, and I don't mind it, but I have the the whole everyone gets a musician. And so like, I've been wanting to donate some time to one of, um find one of the churches out here that does a part of that. I don't know something about singing. You know, it's just. Res Oh yeah, it's a, it's absolutely essential to have um, some form of music. There's uh, there's different. Obviously, there's just so many different expressions of of Christianity in America. It's 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 kind of like, uh, it, it's kind of tough. The the one I go to though, um, the one I went to in Rhode Island was just like a Baptist sort of Southern Baptist had a choir, very formal um, dress and all of that. Um, and, and this one I'm going to now is totally different. Like I can show up to service like this and it's more of a little bit more of like a band uh, type um, uh, of, of music service. And it's very, very like uh, passionate. And there's a little bit of the charismatic uh, um, Pentecostal vibe to it a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Like the, um, mm -hmm. uh, the more charismatic stuff. And it's uh it's, it's a little more of a younger crowd and it's just casual dress and sort of like, um, more contemporary music, but not like the corny like version of, you know, it's, you, you got to find a good church. If like, if you're going to go to like a church, like if you go to like a, a, a bad church, it, it's just, it, it's not going to be um, g good. You know, it's, you're just not going to enjoy it. Right. Like, and so, yeah, that's important. They're out there. You just got to find it and you got to find what fits you too. Like, that's what's good about like America. There really are so many different types of like expressions of it that you can, um, that you can reach out to. But I think for most people, the type of thing that, I, that the church I'm going to nowadays, most, most people who are like millennials or zoomers, that kind of works because, um, you know, it, it's, it's more of an authentic vibe. Uh, whereas some of these, um, although Catholicism is coming kind and Orthodox is kind of making a comeback. Um, but uh, especially like a lot of these very formal sort of Protestant uh, churches, um, they, they just seem a little too square for like younger folks um, or even the like middle aged folks. Like I'm kind of getting middle aged at this point. Like, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all about finding really, you just got to find, a passionate crowd that you vibe with that, that is, um, 
that is is biblical and and but but authentic and not judgy. The the the, the because that's not what Christianity is about, right? It's not about judging people who who are sinners. It's the opposite, right? It's about going right. to the sinners out of out of love. Like one of the things, like like especially with like LGBT folks and stuff like that. Like our goal is to go out and get them at the church. Like and n- not to you know promote that, but out of love, you know, to get them saved and to try to be like you know, this isn't what God wants for you, you know, and, um, and, you know, try to I get them toward the church is here doing a different thing with that whole scene. Uh, but we have, I mean, I don't know if you've seen it. They're trying to turn our state. Yeah. It is uh, hilarious. And we're known as the gayest thing. Well, that's, the, that's the worst, right? I just got to say progressive Christianity is, is awful and the worst, it, it's like, it's more offensive than anything out there in the culture right now. When you wave an LGBT flag at your church, because what you're saying is you you are <laughs> affirming, the, you're, you're affirming the exact thing the Bible tells you not to do. Like it, your goal is to convert those people out of that, to get them out of that, to tell them what they're doing is sinful. And, but you're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be dicks to them but you're supposed to try to convert them. Like that's it. And it's supposed to be out of love. Like this will be better for you. Like, and like this whole, it's see a lot of people because we're raising this modern culture and stuff like that. It, it, it's, there's a lot of brainwashing in the, for this in the nineties and the two thousands. Um, this idea that you can, you can sort of lead a, a, um, a trans or a gay person away from that. Uh, and, and toward like a more traditional lifestyle and obviously like, a, like a relationship with the opposite sex, like it's supposed to be. Um, but it, it can be done. It literally can be done because we, as Christians believe in God and God can work miracles. And it's like, I, it doesn't matter if they were born that way, you know what I mean? Like, and, and of course not everybody is, is, is going to be like saved or whatever. Some people will walk away and ghost you, but you know, it's, um, you know, uh, and it's not even like, like most gay folks aren't even going to have it. Like, it, but, but it, I don't, it's not just that, you know, but you, that's just an element of it. The, the progressive Christianity thing is just awful. It's so bad. It's like, it's got to be the worst. Like for me, it's got to be the, the most offensive thing out there. Like it's worse. It's almost, it's basically just as bad to me as putting kids on, you know, hormones when they're 12 to sterilize them it's just as bad because i just find it so offensive you know it's 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 a heresy in yeah, hell oh, yeah man Anyways. it's it's <laughs> it's both well, yeah. beyond evil there's a lot of like lgbt thing there's a reason why they're telling the kids all this crazy stuff when at starting preschool that 10 years old i mean you're you're at i was trying to look it up um and i don't think google's gonna allow me to find it but when i was going through a bunch of psychology books way back in the day um you know they, there was a in adolescence is when we uh desires and tastes and when that i'm not gonna try to like start a huge fight about how other people's belief system on all of this we think that like we we've really lost uh, a really good understanding of what it is really to be human and that's one of the things that they're trying to turn upside down right when we talk about stranger mm-hmm. things and all these the stuff they're doing with the food uh the plastics everything they've been doing us in the brain and it, it's funny that uh, actually after school that you um that youtube channel they just put out a video going into how bp things in the plastic was uh, chemically c- causing the hormones in our bodies to change, testosterone levels to change, uh, which would change the lo- the the mm-hmm. length in between as uh, between your anus and, and your um, genitals. Have a big reflection on how big your problems are going to go into this, and it's, so you got psychological programming going on. You've got uh, chemical alteration, and it's also in the foods through nanoparticles and other things, right? They they add other hormones. If you eat a lot of soy, you're going to get a lot of um, estrogen. 
Uh, so, and you go to like even our gyms and you'll see on all the different like protein powders, they're putting soy in it for a certain reason. Right. And I'm like, oh, well, gee, mm. you, 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 they, it's more of like, well, well probably the estrogen levels. Right. It's going to change the, how the body, the, without testosterone, we don't build muscle. And, it's going to change and, sexual desire. Yeah, and that soy, by the way, is probably most definitely going to be GMO soy. It's going to be all the genetically modified soy that they have, like Monsanto has everywhere. I mean, even the idea of non-GMO foods is getting kind of ridiculous because, I mean, um, GMO pollens uh, can pollinate other crops. Like if, like, we have an open air system on this planet. I don't know if people realize this, but, you know, <laughs> like the GMO pollination thing that will, but that will cross pollinate and contaminate other crops. And, you know, it, Hey guys, I, um, I, I, I gotta get going. Uh, it's like past my bedtime. I gotta wake up early. So we gotta do this again though. I really had a good time. It was a good uh, conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dairy press. I was thinking Brother. too, it's uh we're at two hours, 30 minutes. I think we could do our close out now actually. So why don't you tell people how to find you there press? Yeah, resisting the reset uh, on YouTube, on Rumble, BitChute, and Odyssey, and uh, on Twitter uh, at Press Reset Earth on Twitter uh, and Gab, and and then also I have a Telegram group which we we share funny info, so that's that's good. Um, and I might actually, if it's okay with you, Robert, I might repost this on my channel if I if I have time tomorrow. So, and just I link already, it, brother. So. <laughs> good I, I posted it in your telegram for you oh, man you're, you're just yeah. such a good personality and such a good heart brother so yeah man thanks, it's, it's great to have you back i really had a good time man thanks for coming out i do appreciate it and uh yeah great talk yeah thanks yeah. press it's been a long time but i'm really happy that we got together again and hopefully we can do this again in the near future sounds and, uh, good guys and FYGP, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on YouTube under Free Yourselves Globally Project. I also have a Twitter account under the same name. And I also have a Rumble account where I upload the videos that have been banned on YouTube. So uh, all of those are called Free Yourselves Globally Project. And not fuck you, the, Google Plus. Not fuck you, Google Plus. Yeah. I, I still, I still, man, I still like want to call you that just because it's like such a cool name. Uh, yeah. But Free Yourselves Globally Project is is much more relevant and appropriate. But it's That's still, uh, yeah. <laughs> and Cerebral Pisces, how about you? Where do people find you mm -hmm. and your stuff? Cerebral Pisces on YouTube, uh, just as Cerebral Pisces, or on uh, Twitter as Cerebral Pi. I dives into media and other person people that are used to promote uh, propaganda. So feel free to follow me. Awesome. Well, you all know me, so I'm not going to say much about me, but just say thanks to all of you for being here. And uh, I guess we'll end the stream, and we'll do it again on tomorrow's Daily Nunarino. We'll see who we find for that show. And hopefully I can get you guys to come back and join me at your earliest conveniences. So I guess that's all we got for today. It's always noon somewhere. And this has been your daily noon arena. Thanks, guys. Peace out.